close out this game by 48 runs. But you have to tip your hat to that performance from Ireland. So welcome to just about sunny Bristol for this third Metrobank One Day International between England and Ireland. Last week rained off in Leeds. England winning on Saturday by 48 runs in Nottingham, scoring 334 for eight. And Ireland putting on 98 for their last two wickets just to close the gap a little bit. But it was uh, England largely in control. The weather here is, is fine. It's a bit blustery. It's plenty of blue sky above. The forecast is not too bad. We might get some showers this afternoon. We've had the, the two captains out in the middle for the toss. Ireland won it. And it's same again for their captain, Paul Sterling. Yes, we're going to have a ball again and see if we can improve on the, the match the other day. Is that what it was all about? I mean, how you bowled at the start, just let England get away a bit the other day? It wasn't the only thing, I don't think. We're, we're always looking to improve in all areas, but certainly it's been a trend in our cricket over the last year or two is that we haven't started well, and that's not just with the ball, it's with the bat as well. We've lost early wickets, so it's just another opportunity today to try and uh, try and put our finger on it and switch on as soon as the first ball's bowled. And it, it obviously didn't happen for us in the last game, and we're going to try and rectify that today. What have you done with your team today? Uh, we brought in Theo van Wokum for, for his debut, um, left arm spinner in for Andy McBride, so we'll see how that goes. What are you expecting from him? Yeah, he's a, he's a nice left arm spinner um, from, from New Zealand originally, so he's, he's, he's a good player. He's been tossed in here in, in for his debut, it's very exciting and hopefully he goes well. All the best, good luck. Thank you very much, cheers. cheers. And Zach Crawley is with me, uh, England captain for a, a second time. Well, it's same again, what would you have done today, Zach? We were going to have a bat again. Um, pretty similar pitch to last week. It looked last, yeah, last week it looked so. Um, yeah, it looks we're going to have a bat again. And what are you doing with your team today? Josh Grumshaw misses out for Luke Woods. Luke Wood comes back in. It was a tough day, wasn't it, for for Scrimshaw on Saturday? Did you have a word with him afterwards? Ah, uh, you know, he bounced back well. I thought. I think he, he was all right afterwards. To be honest, obviously it was a tough tough start for him, but he showed a lot of character coming back. And um, and yeah, that's the way it goes. You have got to have character at this level, and um, and he's shown that. What did you learn? as England captain on Saturday. Was it all a whirlwind for you? Yeah, time passed a lot quicker. You've got to slow the game down and uh, I'll try and do that better today. But um, no, it was, it was good fun. I really enjoyed it. And did, what about the, the batting side of it? Uh, do, is it you're focusing on other things so it's harder to concentrate on your batting? Not at all, no. I've got a good ball and that's cricket. Um, and that's all there is to it. Good luck today, Zach. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Zach Crawley and Paul Sterling out in the middle. So Ireland have won the toss. England are batting first again. Let me give you the two teams. England are Salt and Jax, Crawley, Duckett, Hayne, Smith, Cars, Rian Armour, Hartley, Wood in for Scrimshaw, and Potts and Ireland are Sterling, Balburnie, Kampfer, Tector, Tucker, the wicketkeeper, Dockrell, Adair, Van Verkham, McCarthy, Young and Little. So Theo van Verkem is making his debut today and we reckon he is the second Theo to play international cricket. There was a Theodore who played uh, for Mali, but he's the first to play one day international cricket. Down with me, I'm sure he's the first Timal ever to play uh, international cricket. Timal Mills is here and Michael McNamee as well. Just let's start with you, uh, Michael, and come to Timal in a second. What, what do Ireland need to do better today. I mentioned it to Paul Sterling and how they started with the ball and he said well other areas as well but it was that start that seemed to get England going. Absolutely uh, good morning everyone when you think back uh, good afternoon even when you think back to Saturday England were 44 without loss after four overs simple as that they've got to start better. Uh, Margaret Dare did come back uh, with an improved spell after that and they've got to they've got to take their chances uh, and they've got to chase better because had they kept their wickets had they kept their wickets in hand that was a match on Saturday, but you felt once Balburnie and Sterling went, Ireland were always uh, behind the eight ball. So we think back, they chased 329 in Southampton three years ago, but you also think back here in 2017 where Adil Rashid did all the damage and arguably um, spin was the, was the key factor. Rayan Ahmed possibly, you know, the player of the match on Saturday. So they've got to chase better, they've got to hold on to their wickets and they've got to bat the 50 overs in the chase. What about Theo van Verkham coming into the side? He's a New Zealand-born left-arm spinner, has had a very good domestic uh, season with the Northern Knights back in Northern Ireland. He's 30 years old and he comes in for Andy McBride. And let's hope he is the sort of impact that uh, 
Um, we think back uh, to 2020 when young man came on and made his debut and took a wicket with his, with his fourth ball in ODI cricket. So we hope Van Verkham uh, has a similar sort of impact as Curtis Camford did uh, back in that series in, in 2020. Tamal England making one change as well. Luke Wood uh, coming in for, for Scrimshaw. He started off with those you know, loads of no balls. And, of course, one of the points is that when you play... Uh, you know, I don't know, list A or whatever, you, know, you play below international level, you don't have the third umpire checking the no ball, so you might actually get away with a few, but at this level, there is no uh, way to escape. But, I mean, he came back well, he, he picked up three weeks. I know we're talking about a player who's not playing, but, it, you know, he's been left out today. What, what do you make of that? Yeah, look, we don't know if he's got a niggle or if anything like that, but, um, yeah, look, it's tough. Um, there's nowhere to hide in international cricket, and it was, if I'm being honest, it was, it was a bit of a tough watch watching that match on TV. I felt for him. Um, you could see the anguish on his face. He took his first international wicket, and he looked like he'd, you know, just lost a pet. He um, was so <laughs> nervous about whether he'd overset the mark again. Thankfully, the, the catch was, um, was, was given and, and the front foot was behind the line. But uh, you're right, playing in domestic cricket, you don't, that doesn't happen apart from in the 100 it does now but um, you're not worrying about the front foot you do probably get away with a lot of no balls I'm sure I've gotten away with plenty in my career but in, in a way it wasn't great for him but it, it was it was great to just show the the vulnerability so much time we see the high the the high performance of professional cricket especially in this England team we, we're used to seeing guys score hundreds team score 400 uh, swing seam but to actually see the the vulnerability play out was in a way it was it was good to watch for, for people to show that it is really hard out there sometimes and when you're in a, a, a difficult place um, like that and you're struggling with something um, it was great to see his team get behind him as well just watching the replays just before we came on air today um, you know when he got that wicket all the boys were so around him and it was good that Zach Crawley kept bowling him and gave him some more overs as as, um, as the game went on in times gone by you could have easily seen yeah, he, what did he bowl like two overs for 35 or something at one point and in days gone by that you know you'd, you'd have been down at fine leg and we wouldn't have seen you for the rest of the day so good captaincy from Zach Crawley I think to get him involved and and keep him up and um, yeah look fingers crossed that isn't the last game he's ever going to play for England because you always want to to improve on 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 a performance like that but um, yeah there's still lots of opportunity for guys that are playing today I say we've just spoken a lot about a player who isn't today Luke Woods coming back into the side he's been in and out of this England team for a while and there's a lot of guys here that obviously want to make a really good impression they've um, they know that these opportunities don't come around every day they'll know that they are in the the next group of players so they really want to make a stake of claim and and uh, end the summer on a high note yeah Luke Woods playing his second one day international uh, today he played in Adelaide uh, last year took uh, went from 59 in his 10 over solid day but England lost the game they were, having, they were struggling in that series against uh, Australia came after the uh, T20 World Cup you know it wasn't easy for everyone to get up with it really it felt a bit shoehorned in and one of the problems I suppose you know in terms of t Tom Kohler Cadmore's not playing today one of the problems is you know, there's only been one match in this series there's supposed to be three there's only been one game because the other one was rained off it's quite tough to say to a batter you know especially I don't know they could have left out Jamie Smith today possibly but they probably want to have a look at him don't they yeah and as you say that there are only 11 players that can play I'm sure that you know the, there might be chat from up above Luke Wright Josh, uh, Josh Butler guys that they particularly want to have a look at and you do you don't just want to give guys a game and then drop them and then bring another guy in so it's tough Tom Kohler had more I'm a big fan of him I've, I've played a lot with and against him in franchise T20 cricket over the last couple of years and he's he's very consistent player and he's had a very good year for Somerset in all formats of the game as well so but hopefully he gets a chance but like, I'm sure he'll be really disappointed finally getting a, a call up to an England squad and then not quite getting a go when I said like I said earlier you don't know when that call up's going to come again so um, yeah look, a bit of frustration I'm sure but there's, um, there's a long list of players ready to play for England at the moment Who are the players uh, in, in particular Michael that have got to stand up for Ireland today who are they, who are they really looking to today? Well I suppose the key figure actually on Saturday with Craig Young came you know first change and, and, and took two quick wickets when you're looking at the run chess you're looking at the usual suspects it's Sterling it's Balburnie um, and arguably, you know, it, it didn't feel like a contest once they went quickly on Saturday. There has to be a big, one big partnership. Assuming Ireland are chasing 300 plus, there has to be at least one big Irish batting partnership today. Um, we'll see. There is, it, this is this is not beyond them. Absolutely, no, it's not. not. I think Saturday we showed that, didn't it? And the difference in experience in the terms of number of caps and the fact that this is still uh, an England side full of guys playing second, third, fourth, one day international. So. Ireland have got a chance here, I think, Simon. Yeah, and if Ireland can start well with the ball, this is a ground that you can chase on pretty easily. Providing, obviously, we haven't seen a ball bowled yet, so providing the wicket does play relatively well, 
We've got very short, straight boundaries here, particularly uh, the opposite side to where we are, so hitting towards the flats is very short. I've played a lot of T20 blast cricket here, and batters are always talking about you feel like you can just hit the ball into the flats more often than not. So if I can go off to a good start, get a few early wickets, get those um, inexperienced England players in, you can get them out. You keep, if, if you can keep them under 300 on, you know, in these 50 overs, hopefully less than 50 overs if you're an Irish, Irish fan, it, it's a very chaseable total. So this ground, you know, Paul Sterling's won the toss, they've had a bowl for that reason. And they're back, Paul Sterling, I, I guess, in larger, will be backing himself to, to go out there in a few hours' time and try and chase down wherever England, wherever England can get. So mind the windows over there today. Have you been hit into the flats, Tamal? I don't bowl full enough for that. I only bowl, <laughs> I only bowl short, so I get hit down to the food trucks down, uh, down at the bottom of the ground. <laughs> Now, the, the crowd here at Bristol uh, today, it's not a big one, and it, it, probably not a, an easy sell. You know, it's a Tuesday, uh, right at the end of the season, Still England, tonight. Ireland, uh, around about five, 6,000 tickets, but there's a good atmosphere inside the ground. There's enough spectators here for it to be a, a decent atmosphere. England are playing Australia here on the 29th of September next year, the 29th of September, and I understand tickets for that, unsurprisingly, uh, are going uh, pretty well. It's In a way, it's Bristol's uh, big day out, but it is right at the end of the season, Although, and it is the last international match Tamal, but you, you, you're right, they're players who you know, really want to show what they're capable of. Sam Hain, for example, on Saturday saying, yeah, I was really nervous. Of course, it's his big day. Yeah, yeah, of course, and for Ireland as well, the, the Irish players don't play another international game until the new year. They obviously didn't qualify for the World Cup, so this is a big game for them. They know that they ha this is their last big game for a long time as well. Um, and yeah, look, you're right, just as we spoke about, there's a long list of players that want to play for England, there's a long list of grounds that want to host England games as well, and obviously Bristol towards the, the bottom end of that list. But yeah, look, I'm sure we're going to get a good crowd here. There's a lot of, um, there'll be a lot of young kids, I'm sure. I oh, know the kids are back at school, so there probably won't be a lot well, of They young might kids. come after school. I mean, it's a 12.30 start. They might come after school, mightn't they? I mean, you know, there is space for people to, to come today if you, you know, if you want to come down later. So, uh, yeah, that's the challenge. Didn't finish your schoolwork and then pop on down. You only missed about three hours cricket. OK, right. Uh, we're going to have the umpires with us uh, very soon. And the players, I'm surprised, actually, the umpires. Oh, there they are. They're on, over my right shoulder here at Ireland. Um, making their way out in their green, dark green shirts and black trousers. And the two England openers, a punch of gloves there between uh, Will Jacks and Phil Sott. Jacks, who plays so well on Saturday, he really did. He got England going. So they are opening up again. Let's go to the commentary box now and say good afternoon to Henry Moran and Alex Hartley. Good afternoon to you, Simon. Thank you very much indeed. Yep. Out come the players, Ireland, in this rather dark green, actually. They've got the dark green tops and the uh, the dark blue bottoms. England all in that sort of royal blue that we'll be seeing an awful lot of over the next few weeks as England, uh, actually not this particular group of players, but England in general, the more wide, if you like, uh, ODI side, will be in action from Saturday in their World Cup warm-up. So a reminder, every ball of every game of the World Cup beginning on October 5th, uh, coming to you from Test Match Special, England up against New Zealand from Ahmedabad. Uh, so that's all to look forward to next month, but there is still finally day 60, Alex Hartley, of international cricket. Is that what it is? That 60? is what it is. I'll tell you what, Henry, it feels like day 60 as well. I am shattered. Are you? <laughs> yes. Well, you better rest up. So we go again next week. Well, indeed, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're going to see Phil Salt on strike, played nicely. Uh, 28 off 21, that sort of jet-powered start that he provides. Uh, yeah, he looked, re he looked really good the other day, didn't he? And it was one of those where when he got out, you could quite clearly see the frustration on his face. He was one of those where he's like, oh, I've just missed out on some free runs there. He looked really good, got off to a quick start. And then Will Jacks, obviously, with his... 90 odd and then before a slog sweep caught a deep mid wicket he showed his frustration but actually it was such a good knock from from will jack showing all of his talent well mark adair is going to bowl from the bristol pavilion end where we are he's got 32 in gold on his back and as the sun it does its very best it's, it's like a sun at the end of a summer that's just thinking one last effort i'm going to do my best for you today his sunglasses on sunglasses off yeah, Weather. one of those, isn't it? But Mark Adair's going to bowl. He took uh, one for in the last game. And he'll be hoping to get a little bit of a way shape with one of those two slips that are in place to gobble up an early opportunity. We're ready to go. England asked to bat first by Ireland. And here comes Mark Adair. Right arm over the wicket. And this is slashed away immediately. It's going to be runs. And it'll be four of them. Carved over the fielder at backward point. A couple of bounces. And spearing over to the ropes over. A deep backward point. And that's quite a statement, short and wide, and he flung everything at it. 
Well, before I got the opportunity to say that Ireland will want to start better than they did in the previous ODI at Trent Bridge, Phil Salt's hit the first ball for four. Salt on the strike, waiting menacingly now as Adair is in. And this is a better looking delivery and a better looking shot. Punch away off the back foot, through the covers, could be four. Quick outfield and the ball gets there. That's a lovely shot. If the previous one was a bit of a freebie, that was all about the timing. And it was perfect, eight without loss. Yeah, great shot from Phil Salt. Still a little bit of width if we're going to be hypercritical. It's there to be driven through the offside, but he's played that upright almost when you come out of your crease. You're playing off the front foot, but you're back a little bit as well. Love the shot from Salt, and what a statement from England here already. Still those two slips. Salt waiting, gets a leg side delivery this time. Could be four more, it will be. Just helped away towards the square boundary. Into the leg side it goes. 4-4-4 four, four, four for Phil Salt to start this game. 12 without loss. And as the sun peeks out from behind the cloud, have a little look at what's going on in Bristol. Runs are being scored. Quite often as a team, in the huddle you talk about setting the tone. How do we get an early wicket? How do we get on top? It's all about the first over. And as a batting unit, you say, counter-attack that. Let's get on top of the bowler. Let's put them under pressure. Adair bowling to Salt, who goes big in the air, into the leg side for six. Out towards that stand, over to our right. And that's a mighty blow. That is huge from Phil Salt into the stand. Back of a length from Adair. He's tried everything else. He's tried full. He's tried the wider one. One off the hip that get hit for four. The shorter ball this time, and Phil Salt just stands still and slaps him over deep mid-wicket for six. Well, already the conversations are taking place about how they can stem this flow of runs. Paul Sterling is standing at slip, chewing gum and trying to offer some enthusiasm and applause. But at the moment, it's not quite going to plan. 18 without loss after just four balls. Salt waiting down the leg side. That'll be wide. 19 without loss. Andy Zaltzman, good afternoon to you. Afternoon, Henry. I was wondering what England's start was like the other day because it was pretty... Well, they began with a dot, uh, <laughs> then uh, two fours, then three dots. So it was eight at the end of the first over, then the second over. Uh, so that was Phil Salt faced that first over. The second over from Josh Little. Will Jacks at the second, third and fourth balls for four. They were... Adair on, uh, coming into bowl to uh, Salt, who uh, is struck on the pad. and It'll drop into the onside and there is no run. That's more like it from an Ireland point of view. 19 without loss. Uh, this is already the most runs scored by an... England batter in the first over of men's ODI innings. 18, off. now five. Talk about setting the tone. Mm. What would you end up on if you went at 18 and over for 50? 900. <laughs> Adair running into bowl to Phil Salt, who is just defending up on his toes into the offside. So uh, after all the fun at the start of the over, it's a little more placid as the uh, first over concludes with a couple of dots. England 19 without loss, 4-4-4-6 four, 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 from Phil Salt. You'll be able to see those boundaries on the highlights with Ebony Rainford-Brent on BBC Television today and on the BBC Sport website and app as we go through the day. So looking at uh, the whole history of uh, ODI cricket, the men's game, only one player has ever scored more than 18 in the first over of an innings. That was Graham Smith for South Africa <laughs> against England at Edgebaston in 2003. Salt is the fourth player to score 18 oh, in yeah, the first yeah. over. Yeah. Most recently, Ramanullah yeah. Gerbaz also yeah. against Ireland. That's for Afghanistan back in January 2021. And the other two players to do it, Colin Munro of New Zealand against India and Glenn Maxwell 10 years ago for Australia against West Indies. I don't think of Graham Smith playing like that. That's a lot of nudges off the hip to the boundary, uh, in my mind. 19 without loss, then, after one over. And Josh Little is going to try and retrieve a little bit of the damage. Still those two slips waiting. Sterling stands, wearing a shirt that looks at least two sizes too big, untucked. Yeah, it's fashionable baggy clothes at the minute. In comes Little, left arm over, driven beautifully by Jacks away through cover. This could be four runs. It's just slowing up a touch. Fielder in pursuit can't get there. And despite the best efforts of the debutant, Theo van Verkum, he couldn't stop it. And the second over starts with a boundary, 23 without loss. Jacks into his work. Well, what Josh Little did the other day, he bowled too full, far too full. And you know he wants to bowl quick, he wants to try and 
beat the batter for pace, but you can't bowl there. Again, too full in the slot, especially with no extra cover. It's just being coming down, going, hit me through there, please. In comes Little again, and once more, quite a full delivery. A little bit of in shape left alone by Jax, who played beautifully the other day, making that 94 off 88. He looked less than gruntled as he walked off, having not got his 100. Yeah, but he, I think he had a moment of, oh, what have I just done? And then walked off and was like, played pretty well there. Yeah, I think, you, you, you know, it's always that thing. You take 94 at the start of the day, you just, you're frustrated when you get out for it. Mm. In comes Little again then, running in past umpire Tucker and, ooh, feeling for a ball that lifts, and that's a good delivery. It goes through to the hands of Lorcan Tucker, but uh, it has a bit of something there off the surface for Little. Yeah, and that's the difference between bowling too full in the slot and then that just back of a length delivery that, with his extra pace, can nip. It's just nipped away from Will Jacks ever so slightly. One of those where you're half expecting the keeper to toss the ball in the air. He just wondered if chasing it he'd got a little edge. He didn't. And survives on four. 23 without loss. Here comes Little. And there is an edge, but it beats the uh, slip and runs down towards the boundary at deep third. Fielder will run round to pick up, and so uh, as Barry McCarthy collects, it's uh, a couple added to the score. But Ireland have two slips in place. Had there been a third, it would have been easy peasy. England 25 without loss. Very rarely see three slips in one day cricket now, though. But now I can't stop looking at Paul Sterling's shirt. It is, it's mid-thigh. Yeah. And very baggy. It, yeah. He's not a tall man. Here comes Little. Left arm over. Jack's a little more cautious this time. Defends towards point, and there is no run. He couldn't bowl with it like that, surely. I know. When was the last time he bowled in international cricket? It'll, be a, it'll have been a while ago. Sterling in that, yeah. Well, he took a couple of wickets in that game in 2011, but he's bowled a lot less recently. Um, I'll dig out his, uh, his recent bowling stats. Part of a Northern Irish contingent as part of this All-Ireland team. As in comes Little, running into bowl to Will Jacks, who is defending very correctly, leaning forward out towards cover. And there is no run. 25 without loss after two. It's been looking at the, the previous or well, the only time a player scored more than uh, 18 in the first over of an ODI innings, Graham Smith, off the bowling of Jimmy Anderson in 2003. 4-4.443, four, 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 19 from that, uh, that first over. Uh, Anderson, um, best known, of course, for his work on Test Match Special, uh, finished with 4 for 38 from 10. So 0 for 19 off one, then 4 for 19 off his remaining oh. nine overs. South Africa, having been 19 for 0 after one, finished 198 for 9 after 50. <laughs> so, what? So if Ireland could do something similar, that'd be, uh, that was 2003 at Edgebaston. And England won with uh, 11 overs to spare. Right then, Adair is going to continue. Right arm over, bowling to Salt, who flogs that away through the offside aerially. Could be six, and it is. It's quite a long boundary there, and it goes over cover with the field up inside the circle. Salt is not going to mess about. If it's there to be hit, he's just going to smash it away. Six runs, you'll be able to see that, as I say, on the highlights. 11.15 tonight, BBC Two, or at your leisure on the iPlayer. Alex, talk us through that. It's a great shot from Phil Salt, isn't it? He's almost playing like he's missed out on World Cup selection. He's got a point to prove. You know, in the previous game, he came out and he batted beautifully. And this time, he really has taken the game on. So here comes Adair once again. Right uh, arm over. And this is angled down towards deep third. Just for a single. England move forward to uh, 32 without loss. He probably feels frustrated as well, does Phil Salt, because he's played a lot of, lot of games for England now. He's been in and around the, the T20 side for a while. Decent 50 over player. He's probably thinking, I should have been that reserve. I should have been in that squad. Well, you can see you can see the argument for him can. being, you know, probably not in the in the 15, but definitely the the reserve in, in maybe instead of a J Roy. He's played 15 one day internationals. Salt and averages. Close to 38, so yes. the numbers back it up. His strike rate as well, that's the thing, 126. So he, he gets on with it. As we're seeing, he's on 25 already. This is angled once more down towards deep third for a easy single. And 
uh, the score moves forward. 33 without loss. Sorry, that was Jackson's strike. Uh, Salt will be facing once again on 25. Last game of the international summer, Alex. I know. It's I'm, unbelievable, isn't it? It's, it's gone so fast. And there's been so many games. That Ireland test match seems like a lifetime ago. Well, it does. Start of June. Salt on strike. Here comes Adair. Defender has a good ball straight and rearing up off a length and uh, played with a very straight bat by Phil Salt. And we're going to be reflecting on things as we go through the day. If you want to maybe get in touch, hashtag BBC Cricket, TMS at bbc.co.uk on the email. Maybe let us know what your highlights be because there's been a lot of them. There's been so many moments that you think, oh yeah, it's about happened. A lot of highlights, a lot of low lights. Yeah, a few of them. Just a one slip now as Adair is bowling. Hit firmly through the offside. Lovely shot for four. The ball punched away and Phil Salt is on some mission here. 29 from 10. And England are 37 without loss. Well, Adair's margin for error against Phil Salt at the minute is so minimal. As soon as he gets anything slightly wrong, gives him a little bit of width, just like that ball there. Salt slapping him through the offside for four. The ball just outside the off stump back of a length delivery and salt onto it in a flash. Final ball of the third over. England already 37 without loss. Salt gives himself a bit of space, tries to heave the ball into the leg side. In the end, can only sort of straight pull it towards Barry McCarthy at mid-on. The end of the over, so uh, Adair's figures, two overs, none for 31. Not exactly the start you'd want, but uh, I think work to do is, is the way to look at it. 37 without Ross England after three. Scrimshaw brought his figures back nicely in the previous game, so maybe Adair can do the same. I was going through my mind about things that have happened this summer, and you think, well, it's sort of the iconic moment. You think Zach Crawley smacking the ball through the covers from the first ball of the, of the men's ashes, and... Kate Cross scoring runs here for England in the women's ashes. But there's so many other things that I've totally forgotten about. Here comes Josh Little then, bowling to Jax, who's got underneath it. In the air it goes. Has it got the distance for six runs? Yes, it does. Out over deep mid-wicket. An umpire rifle raises his hands above his head to signal another six for England. have hit three of them already. And it's 43 without loss. It's fourth over of the innings. The first ball of each over has gone for four, four, six, six. Yeah, it's been challenging, I think it's fair to say. That's a good start. Thank you, Alex. You sound surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Little then into Volta. Jax is on 13. Left arm over. And he goes big again into the leg side. And we'll have six more, please. That's England's attitude. If it's there to be hit, it's going. And there's a gentleman up on a balcony, and you can hear him occasionally because he's ringing his bell and making a right racket. 49 without loss. Well, this has been some start for England, hasn't it? I think they'll have reflected on the previous game and they took advantage of the power play. They had a great start, but could they have gone harder? Could they have got more runs on the board? They should have got more runs on the board, especially after 30 overs, England 200 on, on the board. You think, oh, can they get... Can they get a 400? They should get a 400. And when you look at the World Cup squad, that's a team that would have got 400 against this island side. So probably not a few stern words, but a few few words going, just go as hard as you can for as long as you can. Yeah. Well, the ball's been retrieved. It went whizzing away out towards the Portaloos to our left. Someone's had to crawl down underneath them, which is a particularly pleasant job. Here comes Little and bowls to Jax, who's rather squared up by a ball, which is much better and a little bit fuller, but not too full. And uh, there is England's 50 as they scramble through for a leg bite. 50 without loss after 3.3 overs. I mean, it's ridiculous for England. Ridiculous. It's been such a positive start from them. Adair in his first over, a couple of balls outside the off stump. They were there to be hit, but there's also been some decent deliveries that have been hit for six. You can see that... England coaching staff in the dugout. Matthew Mott, head coach, with a huge smile on his face today. He's sipping his coffee with plenty of enjoyment, I think. Here comes uh, Little bowling. A ball which is driven. That's a gorgeous shot. Down the ground, punched away by Phil Salt. And the on-drive went played like that. 
there are a few things better in this game. That is a lovely shot. And in the sunshine, England are cantering along. 54 without loss and Salt's got 33. What makes it better from Phil Salt as well, he's seen the slight change in the field. Mid-on just went ever so slightly wider after the couple of previous shots had been hit into the leg side. So Mid-on's just gone wider, so he's hit it straight back down the ground. Here comes Little, giving himself a little bit of room is Salt. He's not got hold of that, but it will clear the infield down towards the boundary. It plugs just before it reaches that boundary. But a fine leg, throw comes in with a couple more added. England moving forward, 56 without loss. I can tell when you're excited with a stat, Andy Zaltzman. I'm going to give you a moment just to collect your thoughts. Just to calm Keep down. Calm. We've got one ball left of the over. England are 56 without loss. Phil Salt's got 35 off 13. I wish I could do that, you know. Don't we all? I mean, it's amazing, really. Here comes Little. Bowling to Salt, who hacks that away into the leg side. Again, he's not really timed it. He's going to get four, though. Not quite off the middle of the bat, but it races away to that boundary over to our left, beating the fielder running round from square leg. 60 without loss after four. Salt's got 39 or 14. And he's Oldsman. Well, England's 50 uh, came from 3.3 overs. And that is the fastest a team has reached 50 in the first innings of a one-day international. In fact, there have been two quicker in the second innings, New Zealand against Sri Lanka at uh, the Hagley Oval in Christchurch, December 2015, and Nepal against Papua New Guinea earlier this year. But England's 3.3 overs is the fastest in the first innings of Brilliant 50. Well, there you go. History is there to be Well, made. yeah. Records broken. 60 without loss. Craig Young's going to have a bowl. And uh, sort of moment, maybe you're not turning to the skipper, desperate to be tossed the ball in the power blow, and the opposition are 60 without loss after four. Jacks trying to help the ball around the corner down the leg side, but uh, yeah, just a little tickle off the pads. We'll see a ball that could easily have been left alone and been given wide. Instead, a dot to start the over, 60 without loss. Here's one for you, Zoltz. What is the highest power play? And then ODI. At the moment, England are, they're on. They're on Surely. for a monster. Surely they're on for it. They keep going anything like this. Jax is on 19. Young bowling, and Jax goes hard at that. Slices away over the fielder at backward point. Chase for the fielder running around from deep third, and it's a good tumbling save out there in the distance. And uh, eventually, the throw comes in with England having got through, I think, for three in the end but uh, the boundary at least has been saved. It was, again, a very aggressive slap at the ball outside edge of the bat, and it went running away. Well, it tests your character in situations like this as a bowler, because you're two opening bowlers, they've gone the distance, they've not quite got things right, and the skipper turns to you and goes, please change the momentum of this game, please break this partnership. It's about holding your nerve. Who can hold their nerve for the longest? We've seen the slips have now come out because England are going so hard at the ball. Here comes Young, bowling to Salt. Oh, that looked painful. But he... Uh, he's taken that quite well. He's taken it surprisingly well, given how it looked from this angle. And uh, my only guess is it's, it, it's somehow avoided... I think he must have double box on. Yeah, 63 without loss. It's a, it's a dot. And that, that's what the scorecard's going to say. And he is now just taking a little step to the leg side and having a think about things. And he's ready to go once again. Here comes Young once more. Salt's 39 from 15. Young bowls. This is just pushed towards cover and a tumbling Sterling. At short cover does well to stop it. And dot ball, this has actually been good over from, from Young coming into the attack and managing just to stem the flow a little bit. 63 without loss. We've only seen three from his first four balls. Yeah, he's bowled nicely. Just bowled straight. It sounds so simple, but quite often in bowlers' meetings, we talk about a batter's weaknesses and how they go and ha what their strengths are, but when push comes to the shove, hit the stumps. Young again, right arm over, running away from us, giving himself some space. Is Salt hitting the ball down the ground. He's going to get, well, maybe just a couple, in fact, because the ball almost, with backspin, stops and goes backwards. It's 
retrieved by Adair and Salt moves to 41. His hopes of a record 50, by the way, have evaporated because a record for that, A.B. de Villiers with a 16-ball 50 against West Indies in the World Cup in Australia eight years ago. He's had a few that have plugged, hasn't he? That one's like almost when you're hitting a shot off in golf and you want it to hit the green. Salt on 41. And he's again rather cramped for room by a decent piece of bowling from Craig Young, who's been called into the attack and done very well there because though England do scramble through to take another run onto the total. It is only a single, so six from the over, five gone. England 66 without loss. They are absolutely rocketing along. Salt's got 42, Jack's 22. And uh, after some more from you, Alex Hartley, it'll be Simon Mann. Well, great, great over from Young. Six coming off that over, and you just almost think, we were talking about that, that test of character, but all he's done there, he's, he's taken a bit of pace off, bobbed straight, tried to keep things as simple as possible. But it's been a, a brutal start from this England side. This England side that isn't their full-strength ODI side. We talk about the next generation of cricketer. Well, very excited to watch, Simon. It, it is. Uh, I mean, you feel that Salt and or Jax could both play at the, the next level, i.e. in the, the main England side. I mean, they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't be at home there. Right, here's Salt on strike, little balls to him, and that's swung away, it's another fine shot, that's gone for four. Towards deep back with square leg, two fielders out there, neither could get round. One running to his right, the other one running to his left. And lots disappearing, Salt to 46 from 19 balls, and England are 70 for no wicket. And we are only in the sixth over. Not a bad ball at all from Little there. It's at Phil Salt's <coughs> body. He's just played it so well, played it late, controlled it. No slips in now. Little bowls. And that was a bit tighter of line. And Salt tried to manoeuvre it into the leg side. It was hit on the thigh pad. The ball dropped at his feet and no run. So no slip in. They're, they do have a surface here at Bristol. You, when you think about cricket in Bristol, you generally think about quite slow, low pitches and they've been quite good for some championship matches. One day games, white ball games, quite hard to score on. Apart from when Somerset played here in a, in a blast match, they smashed it everywhere. But at the centre pitch, the, the international pitch, generally does have a bit of pace and bounce in it. Little moves in, slower ball, it's belted away up towards mid-off. They're off for a single, throw comes in, hits the stumps, deflects into no man's land. They might pinch an overthrow. Oh, they are, that's just going to rub it in. The throw from mid-off hit the stumps and deflected out towards square leg. So Salt gets two. He was looking for four down the ground. Picks up two to take him to 48 from 21 balls. And it's 72 for no wicket in the sixth. There is one delivery that we haven't seen yet. The old accidental Yorker in the power play. But you think, how are you going to stop these two scoring, especially Phil Salt? Just fire one in at the stumps, falling little, straight. Little from the Ashley down road. Handball short, that's six. Over deep back with square leg. Is bouncing on the road behind that small stand away to our left hand side uh, towards the concession stores. And that's a half century for Phil Salt in 22 balls. 78 for no wicket. Those who paid their money turned up today at Bristol have been given a great treat in this opening 25 minutes of the game. Some tremendous strokes. Well, they're going to need a new ball because that's bounced on the concrete and bounced out of the ground. So it's gone on to one of the, the back roads or the houses that look onto this ground. It'll be in somebody's back garden. He's hit it that far. You really need to pay attention as well, because I can see some people sort of strolling along that, that road area behind the stand. And if you've not actually taken your seat in the ground, you were just strolling around chatting to someone, and you could get one, well, in the, in the head or in the body there. You know, but you wouldn't expect to, because it's such a long way away. But it, it banged into the surface, the concrete out there, and skipped over that um, fence area. So another box of balls being brought out. Meanwhile, results? Phil Salt's half century, 22 balls, uh, three sixes and seven fours. Um, it's his fourth 50-plus score in one internationals. One century amongst those, that was against the Netherlands last summer and in terms of fastest 50s for England in one day international cricket it's the joint fourth fastest 
Uh, Liam Livingston's 17 ball effort against the Netherlands last year leads the way. Morgan uh, and Bairstow had 21 ball 50s against Australia and Ireland respectively and Josh Butler also has a 22 ball 50. 22 balls for a half century. It's, uh, it's very good striking. 78 for no wicket. Power play score here could be ridiculous. Well, it's already ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's well, what it's I mean. going to be even more ridiculous. We're only in the sixth over, 5.4 overs ball. We've got a different ball now, little balls. And that's a straight ball that's defended by Salt towards mid wicket. And there is no run. Of course, Ireland responded themselves with a, a good early power play on Saturday with the bat, uh, helped by Scrimshaw's no balls and therefore free hits. But they weren't able to capitalise. England going on to make. 334. That felt actually they, they probably could have got a few more than that. Should have got a few more. Yeah. I, th I think it was probably a par, but they definitely should have got 380 in the position that they were in. Little left arm over the wicket. Boster Salt, who hits his over fine leg, and that's gone for six as well. That was a remarkable shot. It was like a sort of pull paddle shot over his left shoulder. Phil Salt making a statement here. England looking for some backup players for the World Cup. Be in that reserve pool and Salt showing them what he's about. Jack's on Saturday, Salt today. 84 for no wicket, Salt goes to 60. Is that, sorry, Alex, is the highest score after six overs in uh, one day international history for a team batting first? There have been three in the second innings where a team has reached, uh, scored more in the first six overs, all by New Zealand. In fact, one in that uh, game when they demolished England in the 2015 World Cup, and it's the fastest start to an ODI innings by a team. The projected wow. score is 700. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, England's scoring at 14 and over. Young goes in now and bowls to Jack, who drives it back past him. More runs here, probably one, actually. I thought they might come back for two. Adair runs around from mid-off towards straight long off, picks it up and hurls the ball in. 85 for no wicket. What's the highest score after a 10-over power play? Did you know that, Zolt? What, what's uh, the, what are they aiming at? Or well, they're not I was aiming at anything they can get, but uh, worth having a look at that. 133. Ooh. That was Sri Lanka, and they got stuck into England at Headingley in 2006. There's Young bowling, and Salt forcing, but straight to cover this time. That would have been four if it had been a yard or two either side. He hit that crisply away into the offside. Was that that game when Jaya Saria made 100 and England lost in 37 overs despite posting over 300? That was the game. Well, that was that was some serious pongo that day. <laughs> was, I mean, we thought England, serious pongo. Yeah. Well, it's, it's all. That's your DJ name, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this is Young bowling and a reverse ramp played by Salt misses it. Ball outside the off stump. Third is up inside the circle. He's looking to lift it down towards the flats. At the far greedy. end. Well, if it's not, it will be from now on, I think. Don't you think? My brother was a DJ, you know. Yeah. What? Did the clubs of Bristol when he was a bit younger. You're not tempted to follow in his footsteps? No, no, not really. At that game, England made 321 for seven in 50 overs back in 2006. 321 for Which seven. was a, a good score, and very good score in ODI yeah, cricket it was. In, in those days. <laughs> this is Young going into bowl to Salt. That's a low full toss. Salt tries to whack it into the leg side, miscues it, goes into the offside, back with a square, and they're through for a single. That's a couple of balls without a boundary. Salt 61, Jax has 23. What's been the distribution of strike? Well, he's had 14 fewer balls, uh, Jax. And Salt has really made the most of it. 61 of 27 balls. Well, it's possible that Josh Butler's England record is under threat here for fastest 100. He's still got a bit bit to go, of course. Now, Jack's on strike. Young, right arm over the wicket. Bowls to Jack, who turns that away into the onside. They're going to get one. I think they'll have to settle for one. We've got uh, Dockerell coming in from the deep forward square leg boundary, lobbing it into Lorcan Tucker. 87 for no wicket. There's one ball left of the seventh over. Yeah, don't adjust your sets. 87 for no wicket in the seventh over. Well, they've both got off, off to a flyer, Salt in particular, but when you look at Jack, he's 24-14. But now all he's trying to do is just get Phil Salt back on strike. And Salt is on strike, Young bowls to him, and Salt hits his high in the air. He could be caught here. I think he's going to be at mid-on. He is. The catch is taken. Salt's innings is over. Barry McCarthy judging the catch at mid-on. 
You've got underneath that elevation on that stroke, not length, and Salt's on his way. He gets a pat on the back from Jax. And England lose their first wicket. Well, when you play extravagant like that, there's always a risk playing all those shots. And Salt has perished. So no fast hundred, but it was a pretty rapid half century. And 22 balls. He's gone for 61. Yes, 6 D1 from 28 deliveries with uh, four uh, sixes and seven fours. Uh, England's joint fourth fastest 50 in this uh, in this format. Um, Craig Young has now taken one for nine from two overs. Little and Adair between them have none for 77 from five. So he's done, in the context, that might be the greatest spell of bowling in cricket history, I think, by comparison with what's going on at the other end. Well, he came on the other day and halted the flow as well by picking up a couple of weeks. got rid of Salt on Saturday as well. And Zach Crawley, who is making his way out there, England captain in his second match, making a duck on Saturday. Out second ball, if you heard his toss interview. I mean, sometimes, you know, being captain, you, you, you don't focus so much on your own game. I did mention that to him. He said, no, I just got a, I just got a good ball. And he did, one that came back into him. He was LBW. So how is Crawley going to play here? It's only his fifth one-day international. It's 87 for one after seven overs. And we've got Will Jacks taking a, a fresh guard because we've got a new bowler at the Ashley Down Road end. Barry McCarthy has just taken that catch and is uh, going to bowl. And here he is, right arm, fast medium, and he bowls outside the off stump. His first ball is crunched for six over extra cover. It was very full, and Jacks needed no second invitation there. Smacked away, 93 for one, start of the eighth over. Tim Al Mills is here. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. That's right in Will Jackson's wheelhouse outside the off stump. He's so strong over cover. I know from first hand experience just how destructive he is through the offside. And that was a floaty half volley from Barry McCarthy. Probably sixth stump, lots of width on offer. Will Jax seeing it well, not quite as well as what Phil Salt was, but seeing it very well himself. Moves on to 30 from 15 now. So straight away, Barry McCarthy now goes to have a chat with his fielder at mid-on. That's not the start that he would have wanted, especially after taking a wicket. You want to try and get back into the game as quickly as possible. 2.5 overs of power play left. And this time he goes over mid-on. And that's going to be four. One bounce, and then on the second bounce, to hit the sponge with the boundary rope. So Jack's six and four to greet Barry McCarthy. 97 for one. He'll have to go some to break that record in the power play set by Sri Lanka. Well, 16 years ago, something like that, heading league. But that, that was in a chase. Uh, the fastest for a team batting first, um, West Indies were 114 for one after 10 against India in 2019. But that game was shortened by rain to 35 overs a side. So I'll dig around to find out the highest after 10 overs in a 50 over game. Yeah, McCarthy moves into bowl to uh, Jax. That's on his pads, turned away. Should only be one this time. Out right towards deep square leg, it is one. Jack's on to 35. And England to 98 for one. Midway through uh, the eighth over. I mean, it's all in a rush. We've had just over half an hour's cricket and the game has totally got away from Ireland already. Yeah, we spoke pre-game, didn't we? That yeah. Paul Sterling would have won, wanted to win the toss, get off to a good start and try and restrict this England team to score you know, in and around, preferably under 300. But... Very, very much doubt that's going to happen now, the way England have come out here. What's clear is that this pitch is very good. There's some good pace, some good bounce. Looks like a wicket that they've been saving for most of, if not all the summer, in anticipation of this game. Slap bang in the middle of the square. Now McCarthy to Crawley. Crawley can't get off the mark there. Hits it firmly up towards mid-on, and there's no run. It's a pitch you would enjoy bowling on here. Well, not no. at the moment, not to this, not well, to this England team. No, but it's got some pace and bounce in it. <laughs> to be honest, I actually prefer bowling on slower pitches oh, do you? and lower pitches. More often than not, um, come on, you, often, you like to you like to zing it around their ear rolls. Yeah, every so often, but against good batters, pace you know just as often as we as, as we well know it, it travels and it flies off. Whereas you get on a nice used wicket, I like bowling at you know Old Trafford on a used one or um, down at the Aegeus Bowl in the hundred. If we have a used wicket there, that's nice because you've got big boundaries as well, and I can just bowl slower balls. Carthy to. Crawley and Crawley plays firmly in defence. 
up towards mid on and there's no run well, having set the the platform probably saying well i'm just gonna have a look here i mean there's only a couple of balls it's the thing is it's so held to skelter you you almost expect them to just come out and play shots uh, right from the start 98 for one the score yeah I mean, that's interesting insight isn't it that you think a fast ball like yourself would like a fast banksy pitch but yeah well the problem is with this island team these are all bowlers <laughs> for the most part the bowl early 80s mile an hour so they don't have express pace and on a flat wicket with good bounce that can travel Carthy to Crawley Crawley drives nicely he's off the mark it might go up to the long off boundary before I think the bowler took some of the pace off it so it's been knocked back inside the rope just a bit of relay fielding out there and Crawley's off the mark with two and England after eight overs are 100 for one 100 for one after eight overs uh, well, that is the fastest the team has reached 100 when batting first in uh, an ODI. The previous record was nine overs. That was New Zealand against uh, West Indies in 2014 in Queenstown. And it's the fourth, uh, joint fourth fastest for any team batting first or second uh, to reach 100. 100 for one from eight. Well, it's been a, a scintillating 35 minutes batting for the spectators who've turned up today on a, a mild enough uh, afternoon in late September. New over from Young, bowls to Jax. Jax turns it into the onside towards mid-wicket. And there is no run. Just a hint of, uh, of some showers this afternoon. I saw that in the weather forecast uh, this morning. A few showers coming up. It's a bit overcast at the moment. I can see clouds high. I see some blue sky around. The trees that we can see to our right and left being uh, gently caressed by the breeze, not buffeted, as, as I think it's going to happen on uh, Wednesday. Here's McCarthy. That's a good delivery. A bit of a nipper there to Jack. Strikes him on the thigh pad. Rolls away into the offside. And there's no run. I think Michael McNamee said his flight back to Belfast is, is like right in that... Well, talk about the wheelhouse of a bat is right in that storm's wheelhouse at four o'clock on <laughs> Wednesday afternoon I'll be thinking of him yeah I'll be thinking of him being very glad I got my feet on the ground I hope he's not flying from Gatwick I actually read they've closed the no he's flying from, COVID, that flying from <laughs> Bristol <laughs> okay. oh yeah they, they've restricted the number of flights out because of Covid outbreak yeah <laughs> no he's flying from Bristol to Belfast it's only a short flight but it might be um a lively one. McCarthy bowls. Oh, that's edged. And he's gone before. Well, so lucky there, Will Jacks. Genuine outside edge. There's a short third in. And he dived away to his left-hand side. It banks in front of him and to his left and flashed down towards the flats at the far end for another boundary. Just illustrating there is some pace in this pitch. Yeah, certainly. And that was a good delivery. Young's been clearly the pick of the bowlers. And that diff he did just bounce and nip away from Will Jacks. He was playing with an angled bat. Just took the elbow, sorry, the shoulder of the bat. Third man was in the circle, was a despairing dive Seemed to be half a chance, you'd say. Yeah, Young moves in and bowls. Oh, he's bowled him! Flashing bails. Well, he wasn't far away the ball before, and this time Jax has been castled. Jax on his way for 39. It's just a little bit of nip there, perhaps, from Young. And Ireland have their second wicket. Yeah, that definitely just nipped back on Will Jacks. The previous delivery swung away and took the outside half of the bat, but this one just carried on, nipped back into the right-handed Will Jacks, back through the gate, Jacks, obviously cut him in half, nipped back, kind of hitting the top of Midland leg stump. But again, a very, very lively start to the innings from England. Putting it lightly, Will Jacks, 39. So two fresh batters now at the crease. If you're an Ireland supporter, that's what you want to see. They're all getting together now in a huddle discussing what they're going to do now to bring it back. Those first 8.4 overs are gone now. 104 on the board, two down, but you've got fresh batters at the crease, so you almost have to look at it as a fresh fresh match starting from now. And also a very similar game to Saturday as well. You know, Ireland winning the toss, saying they were going to put England in. England getting off to a storming start, and then Young nipping in with two wickets to, to hold the flow. And that's the best way, isn't it, for Ireland now, is to take wickets, really, to to halt England's assault. So, Duckett is on his way, and uh, Michael McNamee is on his way as well. Oh, it's a very benign afternoon in Bristol. Might be a bit different tomorrow. Thank you, Simon. Let's accentuate the positive. I'm on the lucky green microphone set tomorrow. <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. Tomorrow, good to see you. I was enjoying my trip to Bristol, and then the cricket match started. 
This is the fight back, a little bit like uh, Nottingham on Saturday. Two quick wickets from Craig Young. And when you say there's two new batters at the at the wicket, the Duckett and Crawley, they're not exactly rookies to Mal. No, far from there. The two most experienced players in this England side, captain and vice captain for this game, obviously been involved in the test series that have been across this summer. And they'll be keen now to, to make an impression in this early ice height. Duckett's on strike. There's two slips in. That's uh, tucked him up slightly. Squirts out on the offside. There's no run. Have you liked the look of, of what you've seen to Craig Young? He, he did quite well on Saturday too. Do you know what? Craig Young was actually at Sussex when I first joined Sussex. He, I think he left the year that I joined. So he spent a bit of time playing down in Sussex before he went back to Ireland. But he's clearly been the pick of the, of the bowlers for, for Ireland over these last two ODIs that have been played. Even that ball... Just that last delivery now to Ben Duckett still swung and bounced back in. His 39th ODI appearance, and uh, again that's pushed down defensively by Duckett, picked up by the batsman and uh, thrown to the man who's easily identifiable. That long hair, George Dockle, end of the over. Uh, success for Young England at the end of the ninth, are 104 for two. Yeah, he's got a decent yard of pace as well. The, the wicket ball was uh, 85 mile an hour, that last delivery 84, and that just makes a bit more of a difference than Mark Adair bowling 80, 79, 81 miles an hour. Just Craig Young getting a little bit more bounce, a little bit more zip off the wicket. So, um, look, fingers crossed for an island point of view. From your point of view, there'll be a little bit happier times to come in the next shift or so. You know me, Tamal, I'm strictly neutral. <laughs> but come on, the boys, and bottle green. Bottle green and dark navy blue. And it's Bar Barry McCarthy running towards us, away from those apartments. And a studied defensive shot offered by Zach Crowley. Uh, Will Jax's final number, 39 from just 21 balls, three sixes and three fours. So there's two openers between them, 100 of 49. And a Craig Young update, two for 13 from three. Just one boundary, that edge just wide of the, uh, the fielder from Jax. Um, and the other island bowlers in their six overs and a one ball have taken naught for 90. Thanks, Zoltz. Paul Sterling with that uh, outrageously baggy shirt as the one Irish slip as McCarthy is in. And uh, strikes him on the pad, strikes Crawley on the pad, a strangled appeal, and they will scamper through for a... Is it a bye? It is a leg bye, signalled uh, by umpire rifle. Yeah, I think height, I think. Zach Crawley, he's a, he's a big man, six foot five. Just going to see a replay of that now. Just nipping back from Barry McCarthy. Hit just above the top of the knee roll, maybe even going down Possibly the side going as down, well. Yeah. I did sell you a pop to Mal. Ireland do manage to sneak some cricket in before Christmas. They have a, a six-game white ball series in Zimbabwe early December. OK. They obviously haven't qualified for the 50-over World Cup. Uh, two slips in for Ben Duckett. Bell Burney at second slip as McCarthy's in. That's onto the pads of Duckett, forces that... Um, to square leg where it's fielded by Dockrell. And then they've got a very busy uh, 2024, lots of white ball, the odd little dot or two of red ball cricket, but not very much. And um, we, we see a lot of Afghanistan and Bangladesh and Zimbabwe, and obviously huge disappointment about the qualifying campaign. We talked about that at Headingley, we talked about it at Nottingham. But I think this has been sort of penciled in as a possible World Cup warm-up series, certainly for Ireland. Uh, it didn't work out that way to any extent. As McCarthy is in to duck it and pushing out in the offside. There's no run. Fielded by the easily identifiable because of those white Under Armour sleeves, Curtis Kampfer. Yeah, unfortunately no World Cup for Ireland. The Rugby World Cup is going on there, keeping well, abreast of that. Well, that's it. We did on Saturday. We, we had Ireland against the World Champions in both cricket and rugby. And uh, one of the games... Uh, came off slightly better than the other. It was a brutal encounter, wasn't yeah, it? Well, so I'm not a huge rugby fan, but I did actually sit and watch that um, the Ireland-South Africa game. And it South was... Africa had a, had a goal kicker that might have won that match, but fair play to Ireland. Huge amount of optimism about the rugby. Took it, forcing on the offside, and there's no run. This is uh, decent stuff from Barry McCarthy. Those early fireworks have just calmed down as Duckett and Crawley just steady themselves into this innings, but already England off to an absolute flyer. I mean... At one stage, I think, at uh, Trent Bridge, England were certainly looking at 400-plus. They just slowed up a wee bit, and Ireland took some wickets, but this is a 
terrific start from absolutely brutal stuff from Phil Salt. Yeah, from ball one, wasn't it, that first over? It's, it's a horrible place to be. You like to think, especially in 50 over cricket as a bowler, you think you can settle into your spell a bit, you know, try and find a nice line, nice length. But Phil Salt and Will Jacks had other ideas. Duckett tucks away square of the wicket, the chase back for Dockrell. They've got one, they've come back for an easy two. Dockrell's cap flies off. Yes, I did it. <laughs> Before the start, end of the over, England 107 for two. Um, I did suggest that Ireland needed a better start when they were 44. England were 44 without loss after four overs on Saturday. And compare that, 60 without loss today of four overs. Astonishing hitting top of the order and it is it's a its a small ground there are short boundaries here tomorrow and this pitch is particularly good normally I've, I've played a lot of T20 cricket here at Bristol and you normally play on kind of either edge of the square and the wickets are often pretty slow and low a bit turgid yes you do have short boundaries but there isn't much pace and bounce in the wicket but this one they've uh, mentioned earlier it feels like they've been saving this wicket for, for most of the summer maybe played a four day game on it maybe at the start of the year with a view to bring it back but we're slap bang in the middle and there's, there's definitely there's good pace and there's good bounce in it so it's a very good wicket to bat on once you get your eye in end of the opening power play England 107 for two both batters Crawley and Duckett on two but Craig Young he could be very happy with his work so far two for 13 from, from three overs good move from Paul Sterling keeping him going with the hope of getting a few more wickets because that is your currency now if you're an Irish captain fielder bowler you need wickets because you know if this goes 50 overs England are going to get a massive score Crawley on strike edged behind square and uh, dab down for a single Crawley on to three Ireland's previous encounter here six years ago May 2017 the game lasted a total of I think 53 overs I remember I was, I was back sitting in the middle of Bristol in the sunshine about half past five Ar Ireland were skittled for 126 Adil Rashid with a, a five for so not, not a happy memory for the three surviving uh, members of the Ireland squad from that occasion, including um, Sterling and Dockrell. Craig Young is in. Cut away by Duckett for one. And they will, well, they should have scampered for two because Dockrell didn't make a great fist of feeling that. Collapsed in a heap. But they'd already seen the feeler with the ball in his hand. It wasn't a great throw back to uh, McCarthy either. So Dockrell cap back on mop of hair it's a good mullet that isn't it it is it, it's almost like a proper mullet mm. I think George Darkwell's reached that stage in life he's 31 he just doesn't care <laughs> 109 for 2 both batters on 3 Crawley with bat raise the skipper and he drives into his toe is that Crawley two ball duck on Saturday still just finding his way here in Bristol where there's a little bit of grey cloud way to our left all those um, roofs of Greater Bristol it really is uh, in the middle of a war on a maze of residential streets Young in leading e slightly leading edge from Crawley but they scamper through for a single and it's fielded by the new boy Theo van Verkham wonder what he's thinking I'm sure he's keen to get the ball in his hand well, he will be now that the, he wouldn't have been well salt no. and, and Jackson. He going. wouldn't have been looking to, ca to catch Paul Sterling's eye, would he? Yeah. Left arm spinner, short straight boundaries, two batters that are looking to be aggressive. Wouldn't have been ideal, but yeah, we might see him sooner rather than later. Ben Duckett, very good player of spin, very strong on the sweep and the reverse sweep, so he'll be challenged there. Young over the wicket to Duckett, slightly wide, a bit of a slash, and he missed that one. He rehearses the shot he should have played through to Lorcan Tucker. Takes his gloves off and has a surveys the scene, the autumnal scene. It's quite odd with those apartments, isn't it? Right in front of us. Yeah, so it's actually reduced the boundary size quite a bit from before this. The buildings were there. It's very short, straight at the far end from uh, from where we're sat, the opposite end. Young is in to duck it, and again a bit of a swipe and balls moving away. And a minor victory at the end of the over for Craig Young. He's taken two for 16. Off his four overs and at the end of the 11th over England. 110 for two. The scoring has uh, significantly slowed down since the departure of the two openers. And Crawley's on four and Ben Duckett's on three. 
very lively start. Let's just settle down just a little bit now. Two experienced players for England. Ben Duckett and Zach Crawley just taking a time to get their eye in. A few good deliveries there from Craig Yarn, just angling across. That last delivery definitely nipped across Ben Duckett. A couple of player misses outside the off stump as we see a couple of changes in the field. Fine legs just going back to Zach Crawley. So he's got a deep square leg and a fine leg on the leg side and a deep cover and a third man on the offside. So pretty regulation fields. McCarthy is in and dabbed down behind square on the offside by Crawley for a single. Morgan Tucker, the wicket keeper, the black gloves, has to chase and field it himself. But immediately for Ben Duckett, the two slips come back in, stirring the skipper. And uh, while well, Tector's gone to gully, wearing 13, tall, lean figure, Harry Tector. Just had a shift in the CPL, hasn't he? Harry Tetsu was playing for the Trinbago Knight Riders, so yeah. some good franchise experience there. That's the left-handed Duckett with bat raised. McCarthy's in, tucked off his hip by Duckett. And it will be Dockle coming in from the boundary. One more added to the respective totals. And oh, we've just had a little bit of a lull to now. Yeah, I said, that's what wickets do, isn't it? But I guess when you get the start that England had, courtesy of Salt and Jacks, you, you can afford to take your time. And you know, Zach Crawley and Ben Duckett, obviously Crawley didn't score any in the in the, the previous game, so he'll want to be extra sure and just get his eye in, get his movements ready, um, and, and really get a feel for this innings. He's made no bones about his desire to play more white ball cricket for England. It's fifth ODI for England, Zach Crawley. And again, he dabs that one down, but a uh, quick throw by Tecker hits the stumps and they're going to scamper through as the ball wasn't fielded off the stumps from anybody in Bottle Green and they were able to get the single. Zoltz. Uh, the 107 for two off 10 overs is the second highest score after 10 overs for a team batting first in uh, men's ODI. West Indies 114 for naught against India in August 2019. I mentioned that was a game reduced by rain to 35 overs, but the rain came during the game. So as far as I can make out, it was a regular power play. So England's second, uh, England's total, the second highest in the batting power play for a team batting first in ODIs. The astonishing noise of that new white ball off Phil Salt's bat. Rifle shots pulled away by Duckett. It'll be an easy single for him. And at the moment, England don't really have to do anything but keep the scoreboard ticking along. One, 14 for two. Yeah, speaking... Mentions that Crawley's he's had a, got an eye on, I'm sure, the England White Ball series in the Caribbean after the World Cup. He signed a contract in the Big Bash for the Perth Scorchers, so he'll be playing a bit of T20 cricket there. And then back to the Red Bull stuff. We've got five test series, test match series against India in, in the new year. So a busy, busy winter ahead. Uh, driven beautifully by Zach Crawley straight. That'll be four runs. Barry McCarthy down on his knee, slightly overpitched and beautifully driven by the England captain. Yeah, as you say, a bit floaty again from McCarthy. He has been on the fuller side and the ball now not swinging, so not much that Zach Crawley has to do rather than just hit through the line. He's very strong on the drive, as we know from watching him in Test Match cricket. And he's got that ball just straight of Josh Little, the fielder at mid-off. Never really stood a chance, put in half an effort to get there, but in reality knew that that ball was destined for the boundary. So nice shot there from Zach Crawley. Moves on to 10 from 11 deliveries. And he's given into double figures. It's a healthy crowd here. Tail end of September in Bristol. And pushed down defensively for no run. Apart from the cricket ground, you like Bristol tonight? Yeah, I like the city. Good city. It's a good vibe, hasn't it? Yeah, we stayed in the city last night, didn't we? And there's a lot going on. It's a big, it's a pretty big city, isn't it, really? It's a couple of two universities, I think, here. And yeah, there's, there's plenty going on. As you say, this ground, we've got the floodlights of Bristol Rovers. Uh, football stadium just in the in the yonder there. You've got Bristol City Football Club as well. So you've got two major yeah, you know, so two, football uh, football sides. Two team major. city. Um, end of the 12th over, it's 118 for two. Crawley on 10. Duckett's on five. Bristol, Bristol uh, Bears rugby as well. Bristol, yeah. Do they have an ice hockey team, Zolts? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Craig Young in the Duckett. Driving on the onside. It's fielded by the Irish debutant, Theo van Verkham. The sun's threatening to come out. 
Yeah, I think we're set fair for most part of today, aren't we, weather-wise? Absolutely. A bit of heavy overnight rain. Certainly the outfit is looking very green. No, the ground looks in good nick, to be fair, considering we are at the very last end of the summer, aren't we? Almost in October, yeah. There's one slip for Duckett. And he pushes that down and there's no run. How are you keeping tomorrow? Very good, thank the you, Last mate. time I saw you? Yeah, well, it's been a few years now. Yeah, uh, yeah. flies by. I've had a good summer, thank you. Played a lot of cricket, which mm. has been nice. Had a full blast campaign with Sussex. Then I went off to Zimbabwe. Played in a T10 tournament out there in between the blast and the 100. Um, and then, yeah, popped literally straight back from Zimbabwe and then played in the 100, unfortunately. My team lost in the in the semi-final, uh, the, the eliminator, sorry. But, um, yeah, a bit of time off now with the family, which is nice. Young is in. It's a clubbing drive on the offside. Diving stop by former skipper Balburnie. They run a single. Arnold Chested Ben Duckett just does a little bit of guarding. Craig Young remarks the um, the crease. Umpire Burns has a look himself. Looks rather dapper, electric pink. Umpire's tops. Ireland in a much darker green than they have been previously. With the gold numbers. And it's 44. Craig Young running away from us into Crawley tries on the onside another diving stop by Barry McCarthy and another quickly run single 120 for two Crawley 11 duck at six yeah more good bowling from Craig Young graphic just pops up on our monitors he's extracted by far the most movement of any of the Irish bowlers and that's certainly been quite evident getting some swing back into the left-handed duck it. A little bit of seam movement either way against the right-handers as well, so he settled into a really nice rhythm. Young a man plagued by injury through his career. Duck it driving straight. And across comes McCarthy once more and feels no run. Yeah, he certainly would have added to his, his tally of international appearances had he not had injury problems right through. But um, he's certainly been the pick of the Irish bowling, you would say, in the... In, on Saturday and also from what we've seen so far this afternoon in Bristol. And Duckett's on strike. Currently on six. One slip in. Again, just pushed down on the offside. Neither batsman offering anything in the way of the fireworks that we saw earlier on. And at the end of the 12th over, England 120 for two, Crawley on 11 and Duckett on six. Yeah, it's good. It's mature batting, really, isn't it? Because I'm sure maybe lesser experienced players might come in and get caught up in the momentum of the way that the openers uh, manage to play and feel, OK, this has all happened, we've got to play with that. You often hear that when you hear about partnerships in Test Match cricket, when you have a batter that's, you know, smacking it around everywhere and the person, the, the batter at the non-strikers end sometimes struggles to, to figure out their tempo because it's very hectic and frantic out there, but it's not quite happening for you. So um, good awareness, I guess, from Duckett and, and Zach Crawley just to stick to their tempo, stick to their game plans, build their innings in, in the way that's most successful for them. McCarthy from the far end, struck over the top by Zach Crawley. Four bounces and four runs. Just as I say that, Zach Crawley plays an aggressive shot down the ground, mid-off and mid-on, both inside the circle. So just has to get enough elevation to beat the inner ring. He's hitting towards that very short boundary away from us, towards the flats. Big tall man, Zach Crawley, with a long reach. Gets out well in front of his body. You'd want, you'd want to put it into the flats. When you, uh, if you play here, you'd want at least at some stage to try and break um, some glass. I'm sure we all... Well, I think they're very well reinforced for that reason, knowing uh, that they... Uh, an even bigger challenge <laughs> tomorrow. Crawley driving straight and scampering quickly and a, a single for the England captain. I remember playing a T20 blast game here for Sussex against Gloucestershire maybe four or five years ago and, and Luke Wright, he, he gave those flats an absolute battering. I'm pretty sure he scored 100 I think and there were a few overs, he was clearly targeting that far end and yeah, the flats took an absolute hammering. It was it was great to watch that in the in the dugout but maybe not as nice if you sat having a spag bowl having your dinner one night and your, your windows are getting peppered. I did once put the ball through the window at Clontarf, BBC against RTE a thousand years ago. <laughs> was very, very short boundary. Flicked off his hips by Duckett to fine leg where it's fielded and back into the gloves of Lorcan Tucker. Mal Mills has made way. 
Ebony Rainford Brent is about to join us. Salts. There is an ice hockey team in ah. Bristol. The Bristol Pit Bulls play in the National League. It's the second tier of uh, of the uh, British ice hockey. I'd be useless pyramid. in question the sport. I wouldn't have got that at all. <laughs> one uh, one level above the mighty Streatham Redhawks. That's not the top level, is it? No, it's not. Not the level of the Belfast Giants. Crawley driving straight. That's going to be another four runs. Attempted stop by McCarthy. He's taking a tumble. Lovely strike by the England captain. Ebony, good afternoon. Hello. Yeah, that was uh, pretty dismissive, that. Got too full. And Zach Crawley, who's someone who stands so tall on the delivery, just keeps it simple, lets it come all the way underneath the eye line and just bangs it straight past. That, if that would have hit him... That would have been a bit... Uh, it would have been extremely bit painful bit if he too. caught it on the ankle or the... I think he was doing his best to get out of the way. But he has taken a little bit of a tumble. He's back on his feet, Barry McCarthy. Crawley is on to 20. England 134-2 in the 14th over. And here is Barry McCarthy. Blonde hair flopping in the wind. And that's high and handsome from Crawley. And it's going to go all the way into the black side screen at the far end at six runs. And the pace is increasing from these England batters. He's having some fun out there, the captain. And uh, this is the sort of form that we want to see from him. We saw in the test matches, he's aggressive. We saw in the 100 this year, he put some sprightly performances together. And now, as captain, stitching it together, back-to-back -to -back boundaries. Big booming shot connected with it beautifully. Didn't have to run, watched it all the way. So plenty for Barry McCarthy and Ireland captain Paul Sterling to think about. This is the final ball of McCarthy's over. And Crowley just pushes down. Sterling fields no run at the end of the over. England captain Zach Crowley's in 26. Ben Duckett's on seven. End of the 14th over. We'll uh, hear more from Ebony. And to take over, it'll be Henry Moran with England on 136 for two. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, well, the run rate is looking pretty healthy now, and it's just starting to pick back up. There was a, a lull with the wickets from Young. The run rate is still pretty high, pushing 10 runs and over. So you feel at this rate, if England keep their foot on the gas, you know, they could be looking towards that big 300, 400 mark. Oh, yeah. I think probably more 400, given right, two down. And I know we're only 14 overs in, but England have got plenty of firepower to come. I, yeah, Mark Adair's coming to have another go, and he's only bowled two overs so far, none for 31. You're saying that is not the right call? Yeah, look, I, I mean, I haven't watched a huge amount across his career, but I just felt, one, I actually would change the opening bowlers. I would go Little and Young, who have been the most consistent. But he's got to get his length right. He's got to drag it back a fraction, or he's going to get pumped. Duck it on strike as Adair bowls, and this is tapped into the leg side. Now it's just a little fraction shorter, and Sterling will field. At uh, short mid wicket, there is no run. Zoltz, can I? Um, uh, it's, it's a theory, you know, I've only watched these two kind of in this series, but I think Young and Little should open versus Adair opening. Is there anything between Young and Adair's career figures that make. make Make my point. <laughs> Back you up. Back me up. You need the evidence. I want evidence. I just feel Young looks... Better. Here comes Adair bowling. This is short and wide. And uh, targeting the onside is Duckett. Well, actually, if he'd just thrown his hands and tried to cut it away through point, he probably would have got good value. Instead, uh, another dot ball. 136 for two. Are you with me? I'm going to wait for the stats. <laughs> <laughs> Let's dig deep. What can you find? Well, in uh, ODI uh, cricket, Adair is playing his 43rd match, 55 wickets, average 34, economy 5.9 per over. He's running in now, kicking up his heels, bowling to Duckett, who swivels, pulls the ball away, chase for the fielder in the deep. The ball will get there first, and uh, that was nicely played. And despite the best efforts of Curtis Camphor, he couldn't stop it. Behind square on the leg side, Duckett to 11, England 140 for two. Uh, Craig Young in his 41st game, 69 wickets at 25 and an economy of 5.4. So, yeah, Young's stats are, uh, you know, better, not by, you know, a massive, much slightly, but it depends, of course, you know, when, when they're bowling in the innings. You take the win, though, Ebbs. Here comes Adair bowling to Duckett, who gets a delivery that's wide and mistimes it horribly out of deep cover. And England move on to 140 
or one for two. All you ever need is 1% margins and you're winning. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Your point has been proven. Yeah, that is it. It's uh, unquestionable there. <laughs> Irrefutable. <laughs> uh, Nigel's been in touch. Nigel in Edinburgh. Nigel Boozman. Thank you for emailing. TMS at bbc.co.uk. We've been... Well, we're going to reflect on the summer as a whole and look back on what we've seen and everything else as we go through the day. This is some, something slightly different. As Crawley on strike waits for a dare, and Crawley is up on his toes, angling the ball down towards deep third in the sunshine for a single. He'll run through to move to 27, England 1 4 2 for 2. I'll just say, I've just turned on a little late and heard on commentary saying England are 60 off 4. I thought the commentator must have said 64 4, but he didn't. 60 off 4 for no wickets. And did anyone else who used to watch one day cricket in the olden days used 60 for four after 15 overs as a kind of benchmark here comes Adair as Duckett waits and he's hit that ball up in the air I think it'll clear the keeper who's running back desperately it does and they'll get through for a couple not controlled from Ben Duckett who may just be feeling a little pressure having gone at a strike rate of just north of 50 he's not found the middle of the bat like others he gets a couple one four four for two and uh, 60 for 4 or 15, if you're doing better than that, either in runs, wickets, or in the overs taken to get you to 60, you were probably going to win. If you were doing worse, then you might lose. Believe it or not, this used to be quite a reliable measure. It seems a long time ago, yours feeling elderly at 49. Nigel, end of the over, 144 for 2 here at Bristol after 15. So 60 for 4 wickets after 15? Yeah, as a sort of historical measure. Mm. Well, I'm not sure that was ever a particularly good score. I mean, it depends if you're talking club cricket or elite international cricket. Well, I don't know. Four wickets down is not good, is it? Well, I think the four down is the problem. But I think 60 off 15, that, I mean, that, was, that would have been considered a relatively yeah. sling start, I think, oh. in the early days of ODI cricket. I mean, we are watching England on 144 for two off 15. As Crawley struck on the pad, but angling down the leg side from the bowling of Curtis Camphor, who's running in down towards us and looking to try and get a third England wicket from the Ashley Down Road end of the ground. Camphor's first ball going for uh, no runs, 1 4 4 for 2. I should also say about Mark Adair, he had had some very good form coming into this series since uh, the start of. In comes Camphor, right arm over, Crawley nicely into the leg side for one. Out towards deep mid wicket, 1 4 5 for 2. Uh, since the start of 2022, up until this series, he'd taken 34 wickets in 20 games at 25, economy 5.3. So he's had a lot of improvement from, uh, from the first couple of years of his career, but it has been a very difficult series for him so far. Yes, I think that's fair to say. Only one over more expensive than in the history of ODI cricket than that first one that saw 19 off it this morning, all this afternoon. Duck it driving without again much timing. One hand off the bat and it skews out towards deep backward point. And just another run taken. 1 4 6 for 2. England's run rate about 9.4. Crawley 28, Duck it 15. Yeah, and they've set very different fields as well to both batters. At Crawley, they know he's quite strong down the ground and so they're keeping the mid on back. Uh, he still took them on. He took roving past the bowler and up and over. Here comes Camphor, right arm over, Crawley is defending, back towards the bowler who's been pretty much on it so far. 84 miles an hour, that one. Lively. Yeah, it's just hard at this sort of stage when you're the, the bowling side. You've just got to try and contain from both ends. At the moment, Camphor's come in and done a, a good job holding it together. And if they can string just a couple of overs of pressure together, get it, bend duck it a bit more, then they can create some problems. In comes Camphor. So, struck on the pad is Crawley, who's looking to whip the ball away as he does so elegantly through mid wicket, but didn't manage to get anything on it. And they'll run through for another leg by. England 1 4 7 for 2. Bam's given us a run. 29 for Crawley now. Yeah, he hasn't quite been driving as well. They're looking to just drag that length back, hit that sort of hard length, get him hitting it square at out into the deep. Duckett on 15 is slashing at a ball which is 
Full outside the off stump again. He doesn't time it. He's looking annoyed with himself because he struggled to get things going here. 147 for two after 16 overs. Drinks will be taken. Ebony. Yeah. Well, look, England are massively well ahead of the game. If you look up at any stage and at 16 overs, you see pretty much 150 on the board. You're going to be pleased. Um, I, I think. Obviously, England will look and, and a couple of the players that got going in Jacks and Salt would have wanted to have kicked on, especially when the surface is good. It's it's lined up for an opportunity. But equally, if it's a game where many batters chip in, they could get towards that big, big 300 score, maybe even 400. So all set up nicely for England. For Ireland, that was a good start from Camper. And if they can back it up at the other end, then maybe they can create some pressure. You're on telly tonight. Am 11, I? 11 oh, 15. Yeah. Highlights. Highlights. Yes. Um, Final one of the, of the summer. Yeah, I don't know the time. 11.15. 11 11.15. See, I like this. You, you present the program and then... You know, you leave it to leave it yeah. cast it out there into the into the ether, ether. of, some, of some network broadcast. Magic happens. Yes, eleven fifteen. Yeah. And highlights. You can watch it back at your leisure. Highlights okay. on the BBC Sport website and app as well. And I tell you, it might be quite a nice day to do it tomorrow because we've got Storm Agnes coming. When is that? In? Tomorrow, apparently. Is it hitting London or just the rest of the world? Oh, the rest of the. World. I'm afraid. Yes, I think it will. It will hit London. I think. I mean, I've got things to do. Well, still Magnus does not care. Magnus doesn't really care. I've actually managed to track down the list of all the names we've got coming up as well. Has there ever been a Storm Ebony? Oh, can we have a look? Oh, I, don't I know. doubt it. I've never heard of it. Mm. We're going to see. I'm not sure how common the name is. We're going to see Debbie this year. There's going to be an Isha. Is there? There is spelt actually I S H A. Jocelyn, Lillian, Minnie, Minnie. Regina, Vincent, Stuart. They're all coming on. Is there a bit of Storm Henry? Every day is Storm. <laughs> no, uh, I, don't, I think there has, probably. Has there been a Storm's Altman? I don't know. It's usually first names rather than second names, isn't it? Yeah. But that's tomorrow, I'm so... I'm sorry, but I'm looking at the weather app and nothing is hitting London. Is it not? I think it's going to be quite blustery tomorrow. Do you think? Yeah. So stand by. So if you've got a day sitting on the sofa, maybe you've got a day off tomorrow. I haven't, actually. The highlights will be available to, to watch at your leisure. Maybe during a lunch break, during the county coverage as well. Because that's continuing. Surrey looking to lift the title. Yes, I know. We're excited about that. No, I'm neutral, completely neutral. <laughs> Behave. Every ball of every game. And then uh, that rattles on I saw through to the weekend. your post. How many international days is it? So this is day 60 of day international 60. cricket. Yeah. The, on the TM, on TMS. The TMS has provided this summer. But by my calculations, because there was a couple of games that were short. So the Ireland test was three days. The Headingley test was four days. So you're not counting what it should have been. You're counting what has been broadcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of days. It's a lot of days. Men's and women's internationals. Yeah. It's been a lot of cricket. A lot of days. And there's still some to come after today, of course, with um, the county championship to come. All bubbling up nicely. Bottom of Div 1, all a bit tasty. Who's going down? Who's going to win it? I mean, sorry, I'm most likely, let's be honest. But it is still, it's still up for grabs. You can follow it all on the BBC Sport website and app. And as of next week, 5th of October, start of the World Cup, every ball of every game as well. So you've only got a little bit of a break from the cricket on the radio. It's always coming at you. Always coming at you. Right then, Mark Adair is going to bowl the 17th over. 147 for two. Crawley's on 29. Duckett's on 15. Adair's bowled three overs, none for 39. As uh, Crawley waits, slightly hunched over his bat, right hand, and he's going to tap that ball into the leg side out towards the distinctive figure of Dockrell at square leg for one. One, four, eight for two now. England's blistering start, rather tempered since Crawley and Duckett came together. I mean, weirdly, actually, Duckett has played slightly more of a traditional test innings than he does when he's test opener. He's 15 of 24. Yeah, it just looks like he hasn't found his rhythm yet. Yeah, see the balls that he's trying to hit straight back down the ground is just sort of slightly coming across them so he's just got to find that flow of the bat Adair galloping in again and Duckett pulls at that into the ground swatted towards backward square leg he's going to get one turning for a second that isn't there some good fielding out in the deep over to our left and so it will just be the one running with one four nine for two just thinking as well for the bowlers here they've got to adjust their line quite a bit or length sorry quite a bit Often with Zach Crawley, they're, they're putting mid-arm back, and that's because he can stand taller because of his height and hit down the ground. 
Whereas Ben Duckett, that length is a little bit harder length into the surface. Making a change now. They are bringing mid on up. We have to make sure they don't get too full. Here comes Adair bowling to Crawley. He's looking to just play that off his hip down towards fine leg. <laughs> A mad chase and scramble for the ball. Andrew Balburny has a sort of toe poke at it, trying to kick down the stumps, but Duckett gets in the way and they'll run through for a leg by one, four, nine for two. Now, Denise in Whitstable. Oh, hello, Denise. TMS at bbc.co.uk. Dear TMS, as you reflect on the summer as a whole, please give a mention to the England over 60s team mm. who beat the touring Aussies in the grey ashes. Get it. Oh, I like that, the grey ashes. Very exciting series. Don't be ageist. Give them a mention. Well, there we go. Well done to the England over 60s. I want to hear more details. Yeah, yeah any more, Denise. Here comes Mark Adair, running in to bowl to Ben Duckett, who's on 16, left-hander. Again, he's, he tries to whip the ball into the leg side. The timing isn't perfect. He could find four, though. The ball racing away, and he does. It doesn't come off the middle of the bat, but he gets enough of a piece of a low full toss to get four. And Duckett, well, maybe that'll be the shot that just sees a little bit of the tension release as he moves to 20. Yeah, you often know when you come out to bat when you're not quite finding it out the middle and a low full toss can be exactly what you need. What he did well was place it. He ensured he got it to pass the hand of Sterling and enough to get to that boundary. Here comes Adair. Round the wicket then. It's a ball to duck it. He drives at that. That's a nicer bit of timing. He runs for the single that he'll get quite comfortably out towards the fielder at mid-off. It's... Picked up and the score moves to uh, 155 for two as McCarthy collects. One ball left of the over. Uh, that four uh, brought up the 50 partnership in 8.1 overs. So eight, uh, eight overs. So Adair going to go over the wicket. Crawley target that boundary through the offside. Cover up inside the circle. No, he'll try and lean on a ball in towards square leg. He'll get a single out to Dockrell and keep the strike. He moves to 31 off 26. England 156 for two after 17. Cloudy skies at Bristol. Floodlights aren't on though. There's a, a girl just lazily sort of swoops over the flats in the distance. I should say also, end of the season. Um, we're heading towards the sort of time of year we get the awards coming out. Parties, that sort of thing. PCA, Men's and Women's Young Player of the Year shortlist is out as well. So we're getting that. And uh, let's go through some of those actually, because they've just been announced. There's uh, someone from these parts. Ollie Price from Gloucestershire, all rounder. He's had a fine year. 22 years old. This is the Men's Young Player of the Year. James Rue had to be for Somerset. A brilliant year. And Jamie Smith, who's playing in this game, keeping wicket for England. We're looking for his opportunity to bat. So those are the three nominees for the PCA Men's Young Player of the Year. Always a prestigious award, because that's, you know, when it's fellow professionals, it's that sort of thing. Here comes the start of a new over to be bowled by Camphor. And up on his toes, Crawley will whip that ball into the leg side for one. England 157 for two. In the women's game, Sophie Eccleston's nominated as a young player, which seems remarkable, but she still is in terms of age. It's just, you know, she's been playing since she was 16. Mahik Gore. He's broken onto the scene in the last few Yeah, she's been weeks. very impressive. And also Bess Heath. So those are your, your nominees for the PCA Young Player Awards. So yeah, Bess Heath was part there. of the under-19s as well, which was quite exciting for her to be part of that first women's tournament. And for galloping in, that's swatted away by Duckett. Lovely shot for four, and that is a shot that will see him feeling an awful lot better about life. A lovely sound off the middle of that bat and clattered away through mid-wicket. On the pull in front of square, one six one for two. Yeah, I feel like that low full toss got him going. He, he got that when he was a little bit out of touch and then we saw him drive a really nice ball into the covers. Didn't get past, but he sense now he's finding that rhythm. Here comes Camphor again, bowling to Duckett, who this time targets the offside. That familiar swing of the blade with that high back lift and the ball goes spearing out towards deep cover for one one six two for two so midway was, through the 18th sorry i was really intrigued by the gray ashes oh yeah uh, it looks like they uh they nailed them they were leading 2-1 before heading into the cotswolds and uh, the skipper knew that victory would keep yeah on home soil camphor running in and crawley again up on his toes just happy to pick up the single 
into the leg side towards Craig Young at uh, fine leg. Can I, is there a women's grey ashes? Because I might have some time. <laughs> when do you? When would you qualify? I don't know. What, what's about the, fifty years? Over, but I'm just preparing. It's over sixty, isn't it? So you've got a while yet. Yeah, um, me and Hartley, I think we could have a dip, and then we come back for the grey ashes when we turn sixty. Yeah, so mark your cards, 2031. <laughs> Here comes Camper, bowling to Duckett. Pulls that ball hard towards Sterling at mid wicket. He does well to get something on it. That was hit like a tracer bullet. But he can't quite beat the field. A 1 6 3 for 2. Hey, that sounds fun, the grey ashes. I'm, I'm keen. I'm keen. I know Hartley will be keen. I'm not sure we could have covered much more cricket this summer. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. In comes Camper. Running in towards us, slightly angled approach, right arm over, Duckett drives towards deep cover. It'll pick up a single at least. And uh, it will just be the one run. So uh, end of the 18th, 164 for four. Uh, hello to Simon in Berlin, who's listening. Been at the hospital for blood tests here. Hearing England smack it around is wonderful. Thank you for making an English person feel very happy in Berlin. And Maria as well, uh, listening in sunny Suffolk, who attended your first ever women's game. At the test at Trent Bridge. It's did Chelmsford for the first time for a T20 as well against Sri Lanka. None of those games will be her last. My appetite for live cricket stronger than ever. That's lovely to hear. TMS at bbc.co.uk to get in touch. And uh, Ebony, some more from you with England 164 for two after 18. And then Simon Mann. Well, partnership building nicely. And then uh, plenty more batting to come in. Ryan Ahmed, Bryden Koss, Jamie Smith. So there's an engine room in the middle as Adair continues in. New over begins. Adair bowling and it's driven by Duckett up towards mid-on. And there's no run. 164 for two. It's a run glut. Pressure on Ireland. The ball disappearing here, there and everywhere. How many is it going to be? Well, it's 335 on Saturday. Feels like it could be a few more. Have you got to be grey to play in the, the, the over 60 ashes? Do you say, do you say the, the grey ashes? That's what it's called, yeah. Duckett drives into the offside, doesn't really time it, goes bobbling out towards cover. The question is, you know, some, some may use coverings. Myself may use colour coverings at times. I think I'll still be covering when I hit 60 too, so... That's just, is that just the nickname, the grey ashes, is it? Well, yeah, that's what she said. It's cool. Right. Okay. You, you, you would make <laughs> you'd make the eleven side. Not yet. Not not yet, Ebbs. Not yet. Adair to Duckett, the left-hander. It's full. It's turned away by Duckett. It's going down fine. They're off for one. I'll have to settle for that. Throws on its way. Fielded it in front of the flats at the far end. Quite a few people watching on balconies. And some co collegiately. Some individually. And we've got the, the the camera operatives as well. They're up there on the one of the balconies of the the flats. 165 for two in the 19th over. We haven't got that big stand away to our left hand side today. And this is Adair bowling to Crawley. Crawley forced into defence there. Rolls out to Sterling at cover. No run. What's the the flag? The T. There's an England flag with T H F C. I, well, I presume it's Tottenham Hotspur FC, oh, is it? Down here. I presume. I'm thinking there's a I local. I know. I know. They, you really should be supporting your hometown yeah. club. Well, not the hometown club in this area, but you know. Well, it's Bristol Rovers and City, and you're. You know that. I know that. Because yeah, you, I've come you, down you've been to Ashton Gate. You, you were there. You were guest of Richard Gould not so long ago when he was a chief executive. They're in a bad run of form when I came down. It wasn't great. 165 for two in the 19th over. Adair bowls and Crawley dabs into the offside towards backward point and there's no run. How, how long was that bad run of form been? So I was 40 years now? No, <laughs> um, no longer than that. Longer than that. Since about 1980. Well, I think Tim the, the two big clubs in, in Bristol, didn't he? Two big football clubs. One, one of them has never been in the top two divisions. <laughs> Yeah, wow. One of them has never been above the third tier. Wow. But the other one has. And is actually above, <laughs> above the third <laughs> tier. Exactly. Yeah. Adair to Crawley. Crawley struck on the pad. The ball runs away into the offside. And there is no run. Quiet over. 19 gone. 
England 165 for two, so 31 overs left. It wouldn't be a bad score in a T20 game, this. OK, you'd like a few more if you're only two down, but well, you'd win a, you might win a T20 game at Bristol with that score. A few teams have uh, this summer. Yeah. Somerset, the, the, the one team to really pile on the runs. Yeah, I think Tom Banton got a stack in that game. One of their young players, either Banton or Smead, got an absolute stack in that game. It's going to be tough going today for bowlers. We haven't really seen spin come into to play yet. It's all been about the seam bowlers. There's no movement laterally. Good, decent carry, but just a not a huge amount of pace. So it's been all about the batters. Might expect to see Brian soon. Right, here is uh, camp for bowling new over. Duckett plays into the offside up towards mid-off. And there is no run. There's spin options for Ireland today. Dockrell and Van Verkham. So two oh, left course, armers. Yeah. Do Dockrell, a bit more of an occasional bowler these days, but he did bowl quite a lot at, at Trent Bridge on Saturday. We haven't seen the slow left armer uh, Van Verkham. So he's being made to wait, isn't he? It's, it's his debut today for a uh, big day for him, but he's been made to wait. It's been seam all the way. We've had five pace bowlers. Kampfer, real medium fast, goes in and bowls to Duckett right on target. Then Duckett pushes forward and plays it back to Kampfer, who feels of his own bowling and there's no run. You have some very angry Bristol Rovers fans. What's that? So at least they've never oh, sorry, been sorry. Two divisions. Top, sorry, top, top division. Sorry. Apologies. Consider top that division. a full yeah. retraction. Top division. Yeah, yeah, top <laughs> division. You need to. But I mean, not since. I mean, in the second tier, not for how many years? I mean. Oh, well, not for a millennium. <laughs> Kampfer to uh, Duckett. Duckett crashes out of the way through extra cover. Fine shot, four, bit of width, and a free swing of the bat. Goes out through extra cover along the ground. 169 for two in the, the 20th over. Yes, Grashes is just a nickname. There are thousands of over 60 players across the country and also over 50s and over 70s, and they play the Silver oh. Ashes. Brian Simon, we've got time. Yeah. I'm feeling, I'm feeling the silver ashes. Enid Bakewell still playing England legend bowler. She might play in a bit of that. 169 for two. Duckett waits, crushes that one away as well, but straight to mid-off. And there's no... Oh, it's horrible misfield. It's going out towards the long-off boundary. They pinched two there. It really should not have been a run at all. Was that Barry McCarthy there at, at mid-off? Yes, it was. Who, who misfielded that. Um... Shield Berry, cricket correspondent of the former cricket correspondent of the Daily Telegraph. He is a very, very keen uh, sort of veteran player. Plays, a, you know, he's played a lot of over 60s cricket. He's always talking about it. Duckett oh. drives beautifully, back past the bowler for four. Back where it came from against Camphor, 81 miles an hour in the slot, and Duckett drills it down the ground, takes him to 38, and England to 175 for two. His balance is really coming in now. We saw earlier he was just struggling to get into that. This time he waited for it to come and then actually late in the shot, once he knew he had his time, he leaned into it. Duckett waits, Camphor tries again. Camphor bowls to him outside the off stump, tapped on its head out towards deep extra cover or deep cover. Dockerel's there, one more run to the total. I mean, it's fantastic, actually, that people just keep playing this wonderful game of ours. You, know, you, can, you can play at any age. OK, it's a bit gets a bit tougher, the, oh, old, the, the shoulders, older you get. The shoulders, isn't it? Shoulders, like... the hips, the knees, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's the start of the season for me when you get that ache in the shoulder blade, you know, when you start bowling and throwing. And I suppose if you keep at it, yeah. your body just adapts. I mean, could you play, for example, could you play over 70s rugby? It'd be quite tough, that, wouldn't it? Over six. I'm sure people probably do. They're probably, you know, they're probably veterans rugby teams. But it, that's such a physical game, yeah. isn't it? Golf is nice. That's why I've taken that up. I'm thinking long term. Yeah, some sports play. They walking football, don't they? Yeah. And, and walking cricket. I think so. I, a friend of mine used to play cricket with plays. You know, he's a really competitive cricketer. Plays walking cricket now. How does that work? Well, I don't know because I haven't been to a game, but. You know, you, you find out. You wouldn't get the Australians playing walking cricket, would you? <laughs> <laughs> no. Eddie Williams, do you suppose the Grey Ashes team oh, employ yeah. Basball? And, uh, right, he suggests Jeffrey is possible the opening batter. 
Yeah, you want the game to move a bit, though, <laughs> don't you? You want it to be t totally static. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you sign up next year, Simon. <laughs> 176 for two. We've had 20 overs. Right, spin for the first time. Here he is. The first Theo to play one-day international cricket, <laughs> according to Zoltz's database. Theo van Vorkum. Uh, he, with a name like that, he was born in South Africa or the Netherlands. He was actually born in, in New Zealand, in Christchurch. And he's bowling to Duckett. His first ball in international cricket, slow left armour, bowls to Duckett, and Duckett forces it away, beats the diver extra cover, and then might get two here, goes out towards the boundary. They think about it. Oh, there's a bit of hesitation. Throw comes in. Crawley was running to what became the danger end, the non-strikers, and they got through. Oh, with two guys who batted together all summer, there was a bit of miscommunication there. Could easily have been a run out. One, two more to the total. 178 for two. Duckett moves to 41. And Varkham has to wait because Duckett is waiting. That's what's checking the position of the field on the deep point boundary. Van Varkham bowls. Duckett turns that away into the onside. They pinch a single. 179 for two. What did you want to say, Zoltz? Yeah, that, the 20 over score, 176 for two, is the third highest for a team batting first uh, in uh, ODI history, men's ODIs. Of, um, ahead of it, 185 for three by West Indies against Bangladesh in 1999 when Brian Lara scored a, a flamboyant 100. And uh, other than that, New Zealand were 275 for three after 20 overs against West Indies in Queenstown in 2014. However, that was a game reduced to 21 overs aside yeah. by rain. And Verkham now to bowl to uh, Crawley. It's floated up to full toss. It's hit for four. Well, bad ball. Just drifting onto the pads. That was a gift. Crawley just had to lean on that. A bit of timing as well. Scooted across the turf. 183 for two, start of the 21st. So your database has got sort of not just football, uh, cricket stats, it's got football stats as well in it, has it? You were, you were on to that. Is it no, your, my head's it? got a few football stats in it. Right. You didn't trust what I was saying. Probably wise to. Van Verken bowls, Crawley drags that up towards long on. And they're through for a single, some relay fielding down beneath us in front of the old pavilion here at, at Bristol. One more, 184 for two, 21st over. Crawley moves to 38. Alex Hartley's alongside me, replaced Ebony Rainford Brent. And it's Duckett on strike, Van Verkham. Bowls reverse sweep, he nails that, but hits it straight to that fielder. That deep backward point I was mentioning earlier in the over, picked him out unerringly. Very nicely played. It's a good fielding position to have to, to Ben Duckett because he loves the reverse sweep. So if you can try and get rid of one of his boundary options, try and put a little bit more pressure on Duckett. And Verkham was a walk to the crease. Bowls. Oh, and a huge hack from Crawley. Inside edge goes to short fine. Tumbling save there. And the three for a single. Crawley was really lining that one up. Trying to smack it into our commentary box or thereabouts. Anyway, Van Verkham's first over in international cricket uh, has been completed. He's gone for nine in that over. It's 186 for two after 21. Crawley 38, uh, Duckett 43. Uh, uh, Rob Tewton in Bristol says, talking about how the approach to limited overs cricket has changed over the years. I can remember as a callow youth of 11 years... Oh, sorry, he was 11 back in 1969, which was the inaugural year of the Players' Sunday League, played over 40 overs. Somerset were playing Essex, the Somerset captain, Brian Langford. Incredibly, yeah, everybody, achieved figures of eight overs, eight maidens, no wicket for no runs. Surely one of those records that will never be equaled. I'm fairly sure that those matches were televised live, televised live on BBC Two in those days. I certainly remember watching coverage of it and staring disbelief as 8-8, eight, eight, naught, naught, appeared on the screen. Little bowls, and Crawley drives towards mid-off, and there is no run. Yeah, that did happen, and it was televised on BBC Two uh, back in those days. It was actually about the only thing that used to happen on a Sunday in the 1970s. <laughs> That's a remarkable bowling figures. You would have been very bored in the 1970s on a Sunday, Alex. I don't even know if my mum was born. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you must know what year your mum was born in. Yeah, I'm taking the mix. I think she was, think she was 74. Right. 
Crawley on 39. Waits for Little, is bowling left arm round the wicket. Next side the off stump, drilled out towards extra cover, chased around there for the fielder. Dockrell to his right hand side, tumbling save, have to get it on his left hand to return it. Sends it on the bounce into Tucker and they come back for two runs, 188 for two. Yeah, 40 over Sunday League was the highlight of my week in the 1970s. It just shows you how dull the 1970s were. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I, I used to love playing 40 over cricket. Yeah, no, it was great fun. It was then. fantastic fun, yeah. It was a big thing, the John Player League in the 70s. Little bowls and lifted by Crawley. Just stands and watches this. It's going into the flats area. A few ducking in the crowd just beneath it. And that's a way for six runs. I think they're one or two pointing where the ball's gone. You might have to get... Oh, there, oh, someone's got it. A man in a black shirt there on the far end of the ground has just trotted behind the stand to pick it up. But over the small stand and beneath the, the block of flats for six. Lovely sound off the bat. Well, that's been Little's bad ball today. Just too full in the slot. And Crawley picks that up with absolutely no effort whatsoever. Josh Little... 3.3 overs, none for 54 so far. Goes in now to bowl to Crawley, and Crawley miscues that. It's going over the keeper's head. He's got away with it, down towards the fine deep third boundary. Adair runs round to his left-hand side, lobs it in, and Crawley gets away with it. Well, that could have gone anywhere. Went very high in the air. Tucker was looking up, thinking, is that mine? No, it wasn't. It was behind him. 196 for two. Crawley to 49. I, I love that, the, the pose from Crawley after he hit that previous shot. Not that one. The one before where you just stand and watch it. You, go, you just, um, bang, six. You just know it's gone. He just stood and watched it. Little to Crawley. Crawley, low pull there, down towards deep backwards square leg. A through for a single. Crawley goes to 50. One naught on his captaincy debut on Saturday. He said he just got a good ball today. 50 in very good time. At 39 balls, two sixes and four fours. His second ODI 50, made 58 not out on debut against Pakistan in Cardiff in 2021. This is just his fifth inning, so now two 50s, two ducks and a 39. Yeah, well, he's got a great opportunity here to, to go on. Lots of overs left. Little bowls to duck it. Short ball pulled away in front of square, well in front of square. Chase round for Dockerall. Away to his right-hand side, and they're through for two more. Ireland are chasing a lot of leather here. 199 for two. Well, they're not actually chasing it that often. They're just picking it off the boundary board and getting someone in the crowd to chuck it back. Well, to put this score into some sort of perspective, quite often in 50-over cricket and white ball cricket, we talk about doubling your score between 32 and 34 overs when you've got wickets in hand. So we're 20... Two 22 overs in. 22 overs in. 199 on the board for England. So they are on for a mammoth total if they can keep this momentum. From an island perspective, one wicket. You're into Sam Hain, Jamie Smith, two players that made their debut in the previous game. So a little bit more pressure on those two. And a longer tail in this series against Ireland for England. And welcome. Moves in again for his second over, bowls to Crawley, who eases it up towards long off, one of those you know, bread and butter one-day international strokes. The 200 up then. And that's on the loudspeaker in the background, 200 up in the sunshine. 200 for two after 22.1 overs. I'm hoping this is a dot ball, actually. It's 200 for two of 22.2. <laughs> Going at 9.02 runs per over. Now Duckett's fiddling with his glove, just making Van Verken wait here. Now he settles over his bat. A breezy day, but it's sunny. And Van Verken, left arm over, bowls. Duckett sweeps hard out towards the boundary. It's square leg for four. Two fielders out there. That was so firmly struck. Duckett. Picks up another boundary, takes him to 49. He takes the partnership to 100 in 13.4 overs. Well, first it was Salt and Jax. They put on 87, inside seven overs. And now these two have picked it up. 204 for two. 23rd over. Van Verkham goes round the wicket now to bowl to Duckett. Nudges that away for a single and says, thanks very much, I'll have a half century. 
most others are taking half time today. I'll have one as well. Join Salt and Crawley. Slowest of the three. It's 46 balls with uh, six fours. Power to add it as well. I mean, he yeah, really gets going. Devastating player. Crawley on strike. Decides to block that. And Verkin picks up to his left hand side. It's uh, Duckett's third 50 in ODI cricket, two against uh, Bangladesh back in 2016. This is his eighth innings in this format. Van Verkamp to Crawley. Gives himself a bit of room there. Slicing stroke, caught at short third. Trying to hit that over extra cover. There's Van Verkamp's first international wicket. A slice from Crawley, comfortably taken. And England lost their third wicket. And Zach Crawley is walking off chuntering. He's annoyed with himself there. You feel he's missed out. Well, he's made 51. It's 205 for three. Yeah, not where the left arm spinner was intending to bowl. Just outside the off stump. It actually turns in the surface. So it pitches probably fourth, fourth, fifth stump. And it turns, which is what's done Zach Crawley. He's looking to slap the ball to mid off. And it's just taken a thick outside edge and he's caught at short third. He's shaking his head on his way off, but what a partnership between him and Duckett. And the left arm spinner picks up his first international wicket. It's not what you expect in situations that you expect, but it's still such a special feeling taking that first international wicket, one that you, you don't forget your picture time and time again. A huge opportunity now for, for Ireland to, to pile in here. Yeah. I just halt the flow of runs. I've just got to keep yeah, taking wickets. That's the way now. It's not, just keeping it tight is not going to work. They have to take wickets and chip away. Get two more quick ones now. Trying to force their way back in the game. Sam Haynes on his way. Played so well on, on Saturday. And so too is Michael McNamee. Thank you, Simon. Sun is out here in Bristol. And Ireland have taken their third wicket. And uh, yes, certainly one for Van Verkham's Memory Banks, the first international wicket. He's 30 years old. Qualifies through an Irish granny. Very popular Irish grannies, Alex. As in he's got a popular Irish granny? Or? I'm sure his granny's very popular. But <laughs> um, it is a, a qualification that's been used in many sports for Irish players, north and south. And it's going to be uh, Sam Hain now on strike, just doing a little bit of gardening. And Van Verkamp, sunglasses on. There's a breeze blowing across the pitch as he's in round the wicket to Sam Hain. Full toss and an easy off the mark single up to long off. Yeah, brilliant innings for, for Hain in the previous ODI. But it'd be interesting to see how he goes here because the previous ODI, there was, there was a little bit of a rebuilding stage, so he had that opportunity to take his time. He was two off 12 balls, and you almost think that's not how England want to play their cricket. Today, they are motoring to a humongous score, and now it's up to Sam Hain and Ben Duckett to keep that momentum going. And the 23rd over in 206 for three. Uh, Crawley's final figures, 51 from 42, two sixes and four fours. Uh, the partnership was 101 in 14.1 overs. England reached 200 from 22.1 overs. The second fastest a team has reached 200 in the first innings of a one-day international and uh, uh, in men's cricket. The only one quicker was that game in New Zealand v West Indies, which was reduced by a range of 21 overs a side. Uh, so, yeah, this is essentially the, you know, the quickest in a 50-over game that a team has reached 200 batting first. Sam Hain made 89 on Saturday. And it's also England's quickest to 200 batting first or second. So when England got 499... Little's back from the, the far end. No wicket for 59 so far. Uh, pushed away through the covers for a single for him. Or was it 498 against the Netherlands last, last summer? They didn't get 200 quicker than England have got today. No, they were. 498 for four. They reached 200 in the 28th over on that occasion. But only one wicket down. Man, the cover boundary and mid wicket as well for Duckett. Bat raised. It's dropped short and Duckett pulls it away. And it's a race for Duckett. He's not going to stop that. Duckett hit it so well through the mid wicket region. He got four runs. Just racing to the boundary at the minute, the ball, isn't it? Feels like 
every other delivery is going for four. Duck it, striking the ball so cleanly. I'm going up. Sat up, asking to be hit. And he did. He didn't miss that one. So Duckett moves on to 54, to 11 for three. What has Josh Little left armour from the far end? Gop drops that one short, doesn't quite make the same contact. Picks out Dockerell on the boundary and they come through for the single. It'd be frustrating for Ireland as well because when you look at their bowling attack, you think that Josh Little's going to be the one that is the impact player, is the one that you know creates all the damage and beats the bat for pace, but... The last two games that we've seen, England have just found him far too easy to to pick out and score runs against. A bit disappointing for him so far. Looking for his first wicket today, Josh Little. It's uh, he and on strike pushes that and looks for the quick single. They call for it and get it, and he and is safe at the non-striker's end. Pushes that up to mid off. That was a diving Craig Young trying to stop it. Hubbub around the, the ground. There, oh, the uh, flag of St George with Tottenham Hotspur on it's been covered over. There in the th- what, two, one, two, three, third floor. Oh, I can see that now, yeah. As Duckett pulls that one away on the on sides, a chase on for Craig Young. They've come back for two, they should get a third. He stops at a yard in from the boundary. And three more for England, three more for Duckett. Yeah, Little will be feeling very, very frustrated here. 69, he's gone for off his 4.5 overs. And as we were saying, a player that you expect to be an impact player, but not quite been at his best in this series. Just For me, he's either been too full or too short. He, he's not bowling that hard length delivery. And he's in, into Sam Hain. Ian just pushes that on the onside. There'll be no run end of the over. That length is what he should be bowling. <laughs> Easy sitting here, isn't it? No wicket for 69 off Josh Little's five overs so far. Duck at 58. Ian's just in. He's on three. Three wickets down, 216 at the end of the 24th over. Little discussion between skipper and wicketkeeper for Ireland. Paul Sterling and Lorcan Tucker deep in discussion as Van Verken will continue at this, this near end, the pavilion end. I like the idea of walking cricket. I've been playing walking cricket for about a decade, Alex. Walking cricket? Walking cricket, that's about my pace now. I reckon that could be my pace now, you know. Oh. Happily retired three weeks ago. You, you can always come back, never say never. No, it's never. Never say never. <laughs> Duck its own strike, Van Verken and clubbed through mid on by Duckett for a single it's fielded by Barry McCarthy one bounce two bounces into the gloves of Lorcan Tucker I did I, I came back and kept a wee bit in some low grade T20 friendly games keeping wicket first match was a killer and they get slowly slowly better I stopped walking like John Wayne after about three weeks and I used to keep 50 hours on a Saturday and a Sunday. Those days are sadly long gone. Kept equally as badly, both forms of cricket. Push for a single. And a chase on for Hain, looking for the second. It's, it's behind square and uh, not cleanly taken by Lorcan Tucker, but they just got the one. The throw came in from Curtis Camphor. Now, for me, I don't quite have the skills of a Ben Stokes, where you can just retire and come back. So once I make the call, I've made the call. That's it. Charity matches? Oh, yeah, I'll do do that. I won't play club cricket, I don't think. Van Verkham into Duckett, and he attempted to launch that one, didn't get the full connection. It's behind square, and they come back for two. It was a messy piece of fielding by uh, Craig Young. Two that probably Duckett shouldn't have got, but he did. And he's well into his 60s now. It was a good diving stop, but you just, rather than stopping it, he almost, like a goalkeeper would. Well, he just pushed it onto pushed the post. It. Yeah. Duck at 61. Drives that to mid off. Fielded easily, no run. And with uh, 32 in his back is Mark there, of course. 
Van Verkam on his debut is wearing 16. I have no idea if there's any sort of criteria for how they pick the numbers. But 16 for Theo. That's a big six from Duckett. Swings that through mid-wicket. And that's way over the temporary stand and possibly bouncing into one of the burger vans. Yeah, great shot from Duckett. He plays the sweep shot so well. The reverse, the standard sweep, but this time the slog sweep straight over deep mid-wicket for six. Not a bad delivery, and this is so where, where you're a bowler and a spinner in particular, you have to recognise, is it a good delivery? Was it just a good shot? And in that case, it was just an outstanding shot. Would like to see him come back over the wicket to the left-hander. I understand he's coming round to, to slow the scoring down, but with a, a player like Duckett at the other end that does just sweep anything that's going to pitch on leg stump, I'd like to see him come over the wicket. I think I fell at the back of that temporary stand, caught it, didn't quite reach the burger vans. The attempted slog sweep again all along the ground, and uh, they'll get the one for it. Fielded there by Harry Tector, hasn't seen much of the ball. End of the over, one for 28 for Van Verkham, off his three overs so far. Duckett, 68, Sam Haynes on four. England in control of this completely, 227 for three at the end of the 25th at the halfway stage, Alex Hartley. Yeah, England known for a monster, aren't they? Like we keep saying, the partnership here between these two. And that 400, 450 is on for England. What do you do if you're Paul Sterling? I mean, you just have to keep plugging away, don't you? Well, you go, probably should have batted first. <laughs> uh, we've all got 2020 vision with hindsight, Alex. <laughs> I think you you've just got to gotta keep your team up and about and, and keep making the bowling changes that you think are right. I mean, and the bowling change on this occasion is the hugely experienced George Dockrell coming on. You're, you're the one your teammates look to as captain for, for that motivation. So as long as he doesn't look too down and out, there are a few players that are, you know, shoulders slumped, just sort of going, oh, gosh, this could be a long day. But as a skipper, you've just got to stay positive. Tell your teammates one more wicket, just one wicket, break the partnership. You never know what can happen. And cricket's a funny game. Of that there's no denying so it's more left arm spin this occasion from the apartment's end the far end Dockrell playing his uh, 120th one day international for Ireland we heard Niall O'Brien on Saturday saying how he's reinvented himself improved his batting no end and he's uh, he's currently bowling to Duckett who's on 68 Flicked away, threw mid on for the single. Just another score update to the halfway stage, 227 for three. It's the fifth highest score after uh, 25 overs in ODI history. Second highest total by team batting first. If you exclude that 283 for four off 21 overs that New Zealand made in a range shortened game, it is the highest by team batting first, uh, who's got as far as 25 overs. But, Michael, I have a positive note for you. I, I, you know me, I'm Mr Positivity, Zoltz. I'll come to it after this ball from Dockrell. It's Dockrell into Hayen, who's uh, on four so far. Oh, he just delicately carves that away. Square of the wicket for a single. Yielded by Tector. England's previous highest score after 25 overs was 206 for two in Edinburgh in 2018. Chasing against Scotland, a game they went on to lose. Oh, yes. Ireland have lost a couple of... Tight ones against Scotland in both T20 and uh, 50 over qualifying this summer. That's a reverse sweep by Duckett. Is it going to reach the boundary? No, it's not. It's cut off and they've come back for two. Fielded down there by Curtis Camphor. Two more for Duckett. Two more for England. 231 for three. It's well judged from Curtis Camphor because he is at deep point, but he was probably in front of point. And as soon as Duckett went to play that shot, he's running even before Duckett's made contact with the ball. Just showing that he is still switched on out there. Dockrell, left arm over the wicket. He'll try and reverse the sweep again. It's a sort of squarish sweep this occasion. And again, feel it by Camphor. And just the one for England. What, how does Camphor get those sleeve things up and down? Does he take them off? Does he roll them up? Does he put them in his pocket? So he doesn't wear them when he's bowling. No, you're not allowed to wear them when you're bowling ah. because they are white. So you've got to take them off. You will put them in your pocket or give them to the umpire. So he needs a dark green pair, doesn't he? He does. But then I think just wear a long sleeve top. Yeah. 
Sports people are funny, Alex, we know that. Darkle's in, he's, he's round the wicket to Hain. He just square cuts that for a single. And it's, it's, it's easy for England at the minute. They're just taking the singles. They're waiting for the odd bad ball and launching an assault. And at the moment, Ireland are just trying to cling on to this match. Hoping for something to happen. Back over the wicket, slightly shorter delivery. Not a clean swipe from Duckett. Looks to the sky, saying, what on earth was that? Big grin in his face, too. He's on 72 from 58 deliveries. And at the end of the over, six came off Dockles opening over England to 33 for three. At the end of the 26th, big smile on Dockles' face as well. And everybody's happy out there. But I think the fans in green are slightly worried about the, t- the p- potential. I think at one stage they were projected total of 700 for England Yeah, that did early make, on. did make me chuckle when I spotted that earlier. 700, I mean, that would be ridiculous. Thankfully for Ireland, they... they Got rid of the, the two openers. They got rid of Phil Salt, didn't they? He was Oof. flying out in the out in the middle. He was loving it. Definitely a, a breeze here. We see the Cricket Ireland flag away to our left, blowing in the wind. And Van Verkham now one for twenty-eight. So far on his debut, left arm spin at both ends now. It's onto the pads of um Batter Hain has flicked away for two. And Van Verkham watching as the ball is thrown back into the gloves of Lorcan Tucker. Well, I mean, it could have been worse after four balls of the innings, including the wide after <laughs> the fourth ball. England were 19 for naught. If they carried on at that run rate, they'd have got 1,425 in their 50. <laughs> Would that have been a record? They pulled it. Well, <laughs> you had to get his calculator out for that one. That's a uppish drive by uh, Hayne, but one bounce, two bounces into the hands of Camphor there in the uh, covers. We come through for a single. He and rehearses the shot he perhaps should have played. Yeah, just got it slightly squarer than he wanted. Wanted to go up and over, extra cover. But just Man moves on to the backward square boundary is Harry Tector for Ben Duckett. Van Verkham is around the over and swept square of the wicket by Duckett as he got it past the two fielders he has. Brilliantly hit again by Duckett. When he makes contact, he doesn't mess about, and another four for him. Yeah, just plays that shot so well, does Ben Duckett. And what I've loved about him today is this one. He knows he wants to hit square, so he's right out in front of his front pad. He's got his arms stretched as far as he can, and he's hitting it along the ground. Whereas when he wants to hit it in the air, he doesn't take quite as big a stride. He heaves his arms, and he leans back ever so slightly so the difference between the sweep shots that he's playing is ever so slightly plays it, there's re- a real slight change but it makes such a difference with the outcome Harry Tucker's no slouch and he died for that one from deep backward square he couldn't prevent it Camphor couldn't get anywhere near it either there was a discussion between Bowler and Skipper that's wide of the off stump by Van Verkham and clubbed away for another four runs for Ben Duckett that was a poor delivery Sorry, I'm going to sneeze. You're going to sneeze? I thought you caught your finger again, no. No, I went to um, sum up that great shot from Duckett and there was a sneeze in my nose. Good. Um, great shot. It was a good, poor delivery, <laughs> but a good shot. Ball. I I can understand what he's trying to do, though, there. So trying to stop Duckett sweeping and just short and wide outside the off stump. Duckett on to 80. Thankfully, the sneeze was averted. Duckett again drives and that'll be another four runs and Van Verkham well it's not going to it's going to hold up is it it's going to it is going to reach the boundary 84 Duckett moves on to well fuller but just as wide this time and Duckett onto it in a flash the previous shot he sort of premeditated the sweep shot but this time he stands still in his crease recognises the ball has gone right across him it's full it's wide and there is absolutely nothing Balburnie can do about that extra cover, but I'll watch it go to the boundary. Because there is not a not an Irishman there anywhere near it. And Verkham's in once more, and Duckett drives, and is that wide of Adair? Adair is making heavy weather of getting to it, and it's going to beat the big fellow, is it? Does he pull it back just in time? He clatters to the floor. And it's, he's gone absolutely in. Mark Adair has hurt himself, chasing back. He's gone into that advertising board. And there's real concern for the Ireland bowler. He was trying to prevent the fourth. Still don't know whether it's been signalled or not. But concern now 
because Adair has not got back to his feet and this would add insult to injury or injury to insult for Ireland. Yeah, he was hurtling down the hill towards the ball that's gone into the boundary and he's flicked it back in. It has gone for four and he's taken a tumble into the advertising board, knee first, and he's gone that far and that hard into the advertising board. It's split the board away from the one next to it. And there's the four being signalled. Just to rub salt into the wound. And as I peer down, Adair is, is still down. He's getting treatment at the moment. Concern being shown by Messrs Bell, Burney and Dockrell. So I think this is maybe a good point for Henry Moran to come in with Duckett looking set fair for a century. He's on 88. Uh, Sam Haynes on 9. Uh, as Margaret Air still receives treatment, England are 252 for 3. Yeah, very impressive from Duckett in this over so far. Just the way he's hit his boundaries. A couple of lovely sweep shots and then on the back foot through extra cover, front foot through extra cover and then past mid-off. Doesn't really get much better than that. You talk about manipulating the field. Now the bowler is going to have to think, what can I do? Because I know Duckett will reverse sweep me, he'll sweep me, but he's now started to go through and over mid-off. Alex, thank you very much indeed. Brief, but marvellous. Uh, Alex Hartley to be replaced by Timal Mills, as we see down below us. I think Mark Adair's going to come back on the field. It looks to me, just from how they're acting, possibly an impact injury rather than anything more of a sort of twist or a pull or something like that. Uh, so, fingers crossed he'll be back on the field in a moment. He's walking very gingerly back towards us, so we'll keep a little eye on that. England are 2-5-2 two, two for three after 27 overs, and we're keeping an eye also on the PCA announcements today in terms of player of the year. And we had the young player of the year, men's and women's early, and we've now got the shortlist for the women's player of the year to come out. Georgia Adams, who's had a brilliant time of it for the Southern Vipers and Southern Brave. And uh, on the Charlotte Edwards Cup, Rachel Hayhoe Flint, MVPs as well as lifting the trophy for the Southern Brave. Tammy Beaumont, who uh, scored a double hundred against Australia in that Ashes Test match. At uh, Trent Bridge, Nat Siver Brunt, back-to-back -back hundreds in the women's Ashes. And Brani Smith as well, who scored with plenty of runs with the bat, taking a load of wickets as well. So uh, those are the four nominees for PCA Women's Player of the Year. Keep an eye out for that when the awards are announced uh, next week, I think it is. Sam Hain on strike then. Uh, he is cutting the ball, carving the ball out towards deep cover off the bowling of uh, Dockrell. And the ball goes out towards the deep. 2 5 3 for 3. Tamal Mills alongside me. England motoring here, Tamal. Yeah, and it's all been very comfortable, hasn't it? As Alex said, Ben Duckett, this is right in his wheelhouse, really. He's a very, very good player of spin, and look, obviously, no mystery spin, no wrist spin from Ireland on a, on a flat wicket that isn't turning. This is um, meat and drink for Ben Duckett. Over the wicket, Dockrell a little bit quicker this time. It's nicely stopped at cover, though, because it was bouncing awkwardly in front of the fielder who dived to his right, Tector. Did well, with sleeves rolled up to stop it. And one run is taken. He, uh, he's a player that gently accumulates early in innings, but then can go through the gears so quickly, Duckett. Yeah, and he's, he's very good. At, there are very few dot balls, which is... Obviously very helpful. Round the wicket, left arm spin is Dockrell and Hayne will drive down the ground, 11 from 11. Now here's the thing, Owen Morgan on television the other day was a little bit, not critical, but you know, just wondering if Sam Hayne's intent could have been a little bit more than it was. I mean, it seems harsh to say to a man that nearly scored 100, but yeah, this is the day and age that, that we play in. Uh, here comes Dockrell bowling to Duckett, who is again aiming the ball towards cover on the bounce goes towards the fielder and there is no run. Yeah, I didn't hear what Morg said, but, um, but Hain, he isn't a power hitter. He's not somebody that even in domestic cricket hits a lot of sixes. He's more of a four hitter. He's, he's a very tough batter to bowl at. Duckett waiting and clipping the ball down the ground for a single towards long on. He moves elegantly and gently towards, uh, well, he is now into the 90s. He's on to 90 exactly, 256 for three. Yeah, Hayne, he's very good with the ramp shots. He hits in awkward areas. He hits a lot of pockets, will run well between the wickets, but um, look, also, also on debut, I'm sure there's a little bit of nerves around. He started pretty slowly in that innings. Dockrell bowling to Hayne, who is rocking back. We'll see the ball carved out towards deep backward point for another run. And he's Zoltzman. 
Well, to illustrate what you're saying about Ben Duckett, the, the story of his innings so far, nine, uh, seven from his first 19 balls with 13 dot balls and six scoring shots, then accelerated a little, 21 off the next 17 to get to 28 off 36. Since when, he scored 62 from 29 and has scored off 26 of those 29 balls. 28 overs gone, England 257 for three. I suppose the difficulty for Hain when looking at how to get into the England you know, front line ODI side is what is his point of difference? What does he offer? Uh, you know, the anchor role, well, you've got Milan, you've got Root, arguably Stokes, all do that sort of thing. So where's he offering something different? That's always the challenge for a player looking to come in. It is, but you can also only do as, as much as you can do. Everybody has their own strengths, their own weaknesses, and you just got to hope that you're able to accumulate enough runs over a period of time to, to force your way into a side, and that's what Sam Haynes done. He's been brilliant, hasn't he, for, for Birmingham Bears or Warwickshire in the last number of years. Hayne is up on his toes, angling the ball down towards up. Backward square leg, turning for a second run, a bit of yes, no, and I think a good decision from Duckett to turn it down. Young back into the attack and uh, pick of the bowlers comfortably for Ireland today. He's bowled five overs, two for 19. Yeah, and you just want to make sure you don't give any freebies to start your spells. You've been stood out in the field, a bit, bit chillier. It's come over this last kind of half an hour, 45 minutes in Bristol. Sun's gone behind the clouds now, so you might be a little bit stiffer. You don't want to give any freebies away, ruin that first five overs that you bowled so well. Comes Young and Duckett is swivelling, trying to pull the ball away, but he gets in a bit of a tangle. It drops gently towards Sterling, who, in that vast Green Island jersey, trudges round from mid on. So, Young has done well. We just see actually a graphic of that. He's bowling straight at the stumps, seeing a strike rate of 54 anything with any width and it leaps up to 175 here comes young bowling to duck it and uh, he'll get a single out just in front of point throw comes in and uh, isn't far away from the stumps it's a scramble just a touch duck it to 91 it sounds obvious bowl wide and you're going to get hit but yeah know. well it wasn't just wide it was it was obviously width but it was height so anything that was bouncing over the stumps and wide or anything that was able to be pulled and cut Every, it seemed like everything disappeared to the boundary, didn't it, during that first 10 overs? But yeah, there was a huge difference there. When you bowl top of the stumps, the England batters actually found it difficult or respected it, depending on which way you wanted to look at it. Going just over nine and over England. Hayne on strike and coming forward, and he's hitting the ball in the air into the leg side. Fielder dashing in, can't quite get there. He got in a real tangle there, Hayne, as he advanced forward late on the shot. And he puts a hand up in a bit of apology towards Duckett because that was, well, I wonder if just a little bit of a sting in the ears for that criticism for not moving quickly in an innings. Yeah, he advanced. Craig Young came down the track and Young reacted with a short ball, dug in, decent pace. And it rushed, definitely rushed on to Sam Hain. Fortunately for him, didn't find the field up. Duckett on 91 will move to 92 with just a gentle push from in front of his pads out towards square leg where he'll get a single towards camphor patrolling things in front of that single decker stand it's probably eight or nine rows temporary stand and beyond it there's a temporary bar in a marquee doing a roaring trade as well mm -hmm. i heard a debate coming in about at what point was too early to have your first drink uh, there was when i arrived here the hospitality is below us isn't it so where we're sat now that's where all the hospitality for the day is Hayne pulling, almost swatting the ball from away right in front of his grill. I get off me stroke, but he does get enough on it and will get a single. End of the over, he'll keep the strike with Sam Hayne. He's on 15. And England after 29, 262 for three. I definitely saw a few few beverages being consumed when I arrived at the ground today at kind of 11 o'clock. So a um, few would have, would have started early with their lunch. Um, so as I mentioned, looking ahead to the, to the World Cup, obviously none of, these, none of this England squad playing-wise are going to, to India, but pretty much all of the coaching staff are. And I was chatting to Craig Debyman, the, the England physio for the white ball side, and they actually fly tomorrow. So they play today. They've, obviously, the coaching staff have been a full part of this series. And the whole squad, they've got a pretty tough first week, to be honest. They fly out to India tomorrow via Dubai, so a changeover in Dubai. Then they've got to wait in Mumbai for eight hours once they land in India to get their connecting flight to Guwahati. 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 And then they get one day off, and then they're into a warm-up game against India. 
So the schedule's the schedule's tough. Yeah. Docker will then to continue from the Ashley Down Road end, and Hayne will play the ball in front of his pads for a single into the leg side. England to 2 6 3 for 3. I mean, that is the other point when all of the Jason Roy discussions happened. And there was the back issue, and you know, you've had back injuries, you know what the, the added challenge of travel is on top of that. I think it was eight internal flights, even if England only played the group matches yeah. and not county warm up. I mean, it's so much travel. Dockrell to Duckett, who's on 92. Duckett is waiting, waiting. Eventually chops the ball towards cover, no run. Yeah, it's tough, and England don't have a good schedule for that. They play all of their matches in different um, cities, whereas I remember when we were doing the New Zealand series, looking at New Zealand's schedule, they have blocks, they kind of play a couple of games. Duckett forward, he won't find a run there. Mid-wicket is uh, crouching and collecting in Sterling. I think they have a period where they play two matches in Delhi, two in Chennai, two in Hyderabad. So at least you're in a hotel for a week or mm. eight days and you haven't got to be hopping around. Reverse sweep attempted. Oh, Ariel, he gets a little bit fortunate, does Duckett. It goes out towards what is a deep cover boundary, almost deep mid-wicket once he's switched those hands around. And as he tried to find the boundary, he comes back for two, but it wasn't convincing. Ariel, and just for a moment, his heart would have been in his mouth. Yeah, it wasn't too far away from the fielder circling there at mid-wicket. Duckett. Hitting the ball away, beautifully, lofted away. And that could be six. And if it is, it's his hundred, it is. A brilliant shot from Ben Duckett. And he reaches three figures from 72 balls. With a glorious lofted drive over mid-off. A first ODI 100 for Duckett. And a player that did so much for England during that Ashes series earlier this year. It is now staking his claim in the 50 over format as someone that can do the business when England require it across the format. Brilliant knock. He's 100 not out. Duck it on 100. Waiting, and this is swept and trying to find fine leg. He can't do so. There'll just be a single take, and what a knock it's been. End of the over. Duck it on exactly 100. I think that's been signalled as leg buys, possibly. 30 gone, 272 for three. Talk us through that knock. Yeah, it's been an excellent innings, hasn't it? Came in, took his time to get in after the loss of the England openers who got off to a flyer. Both Duckett and Zach Crawley just took their time to get their eye in, assess the wicket, assess conditions. And then as the innings has gone, and really, really started to aggress, and particularly against the spin, where we know he's so confident and so capable, he's looked to be aggressive, none more so than that shot that took him for six over at mid off to go to three figures and it's turning out to be a lovely way to end what's been a really good summer for Ben Duckett as you say part of that England Ashes series kind of a, a real you know semi-permanent member now of this England side across formats um, showing that he is you know the next kind of one or if not two batters in should there be any injuries in any form of the game and he'll have an eye on the 50 over World Cup. If anybody does go down, he'll want to be one of those players that's you know, first on, on the next flight out to India. So, yeah, brilliant day for him. Vice captain of this side as well. So, a senior player. And look, there's still, what, how many overs left to go? Still 20 overs left. So, plenty of batting left for him. Should he be able to stick out there for a bit longer? You say that. As Mark Adair runs back on the field, I'm, I'm going to bring you a bit of radar news mile in a moment. Here comes Young then to bowl to Duckett, who swaps that into the leg side. Another glorious shot for four. Out through cow corner, really. One bounce, and to the boundary it goes. Duckett to 105. Just quickly, the uh, figures on his century. You said 72 balls, two sixes, 11 fours since when he's just hit his uh, 12th. 28 from his first 36 balls, and 72 from the next 36 to bring up, bring up his first ODI century. What's coming on the radar? Thank you, Andy is a very thin sliver of bright colour. <laughs> In comes Young to duck it. And this time, angling the bat will find a single out to deep backward fight. And uh, England move to two, seven, eight for three. So, sort of almost following the track of the estuary. Yeah, that will be... That's going to be light. Looking at the radar, if, if, if we are getting a little bit of rain, it won't be raining anywhere else <laughs> in the surrounding okay. area, I don't think, so that will be frustrating. But you never know, we could all could just slide past us, fingers crossed. 
We will keep fingers crossed. I can sort of see it hoving into view over the memorial ground to our left. As uh, next delivery from Young is tapped into the leg size. Oh, half a stop from Balburnie, and now he goes down in some degree of pain. I wonder if that's a shoulder. And he lies there, almost just grabbing any any part of his knees, his feet to try and sort of just take away a little bit of the pain. He's rocking back and forth. I think that's a shoulder looking at that. And it's also a no ball. Yeah, he stayed down in a bit of a heap as we've just seen the replay of the front foot no ball from Craig Young, just, just creeping over the line. Barberni is back on his feet, which is a good sign, but we don't think it is a lower body injury. He doesn't look too distressed if it was a you know, a dislocated shoulder or something like that. We see those pretty frequently. He'd, um, he'd be in a lot of pain, but it does, to be fair, it looks like he's, he's walking off the field with the Ireland physio, which is a real shame. He's obviously one of, if not Ireland's most experienced batters. No, he's going to stay on the field, which is a good sign. Just had a quick chat with the physio and he's staying out there. So that is a good sign. If Ireland are going to stand a chance of winning this game today, he'll have a big part to play when it comes to the bat in the second half but for the good of the game he seems okay Ben Duckett's going to get a free hit it's one of those when you see a player go down like that you worry don't you because you just think if it is a shoulder you saw Ollie Pope and those injuries you, know, you can be so vulnerable particularly diving on those hard surfaces those used pitches right then free hit Duckett's on 106 and faces it and hits the ball firmly out towards Alberni who will stop it and there is no run, so about as good an outcome as would be possible from a, uh, a free hit that uh, Duckett has actually tried to hit so hard that he's managed to crack his bat. And looking, you can see on our monitors, it's come off the, the inside edge of it, and there's a big chunk that's been splintered. Here comes Young, yeah, we're going to continue, and ooh, swing and a miss. And look at that, might be a hole in Duckett's bat as well. <laughs> Gave that everything, but gets nothing, the clouds rolling over, over to the west. Looking increasingly threatening. Blue sky to the right. It's sort of a little bit Independence Day, isn't it? <laughs> Simon Mann's just gone out to the balcony just to, just to warn it off. Right, here comes Young. Two balls left of his seventh over. Right arm over, bowling to Duckett, who tries to pull at a ball and doesn't really get much of it. He'll Bit of glove, possibly, and runs through for a single. England move forward to what is a mighty total already of 280 for three of 30.5 overs. The old adage of doubling your score at 32 would see England to a frankly ludicrous 560. I mean, I don't think we're going to see that because not least the weather could intervene, but it was that quick start, just amazing. Small boundaries here at Bristol, you never know. Young bowling to Hayne, who hits the ball in the air and to the fielder at mid-on. Just dancing slightly to his right and taking in the air what was a simple enough catch. The debutant, Theo Van Welcome takes the catch. And Hayne goes for 17. He'll be frustrated. He was trying to move things forward. And on one leg, managed to pick out that fielder at mid-on. Yeah, again, as we've seen a couple of times, Sam Hayne looking to be aggressive, advancing down the wicket. So on the move at the time the ball Arrived at him, ended up paying a bit of a flat batted shot on one leg, as you said. Could only hit it straight to mid off. He didn't mid on, sorry, he didn't have to do an awful lot of work to take the catch. So another wicket for Craig Young. He's having a good day. His good day continues. But as you say, England still staring down the barrel of a big, big total. And just as we say that, the rain has started and the groundsmen are in position, ready for the covers and the umpires are just having a little chat out in the middle whilst the players take drinks as well. I fear we could be off for a little bit of time very shortly. Uh, Sam Hain, 17 from 18 balls, uh, 15 singles, a two and one dot before he was out. The partnership, uh, 75 from 8.1 overs. Craig Young now has three for 31 from his seven overs, just two boundaries, one uh, off the edge from his seven overs. Uh, the other Ireland seamers between them have bowled 17 overs and been hit for 27 boundaries, fours and sixes combined. <laughs> it's not been a, a pretty day in terms of figures necessarily for, for the Ireland bowlers. Rain is beginning to fall. Players still out there, but I don't think necessarily for long. They're almost poised, like ready for the start of a race, those 
members of the ground staff who now do dash on, bringing on that big white tarpaulin. Gives me a chance to read this from Sam in Devon, who gets in touch on the email, tms at bbc.co.uk, to say hi. Thank you all for a marvellous home international season. It's unfair to single out any commentator, but I do want to give Andy Zaltzman the highest possible praise for being consistently informative and entertaining no matter what's going on out on the pitch. Hear, hear, Zoltz. Well, thank you, Mum. <laughs> uh, Sam continues, I'm very glad you got Tamar Mills with you today because he's responsible for my commentary highlight of the summer, live on BBC TV announcing and then bowling each ball of a set in the 100. As an audience, we're so spoiled with everyone's insight that we can take it for granted sometimes, but that was on another level. Uh, speaking of another level, my word, look at what is going on out there. I mean, we say sort of biblical rain quite often. This is as heavy as anything I've seen all summer. And as the covers are being dragged on, they are, oh God, look oh, at no, the wind struggling. as well. Like a huge sail is being created and that tarpaulin is getting blown all over the place. And here comes the little blue tractor that's dragging the three sort of concertina traditional covers, not the hover cover. And they are having wind and rain blown off them. Listen to the noise. Look at the amount of water that's falling. Yeah, I've got to be honest, this, this isn't great. This is the, the type of rain. They're not, the, the, the covers still aren't fully on the pitch here. Um, they're just being connected now onto the, the wicket itself. The run-ups are going to take an absolute battery. <laughs> I didn't, I knew, we knew rain was coming. I did not think it would be like this. Um, and as you say, the wind as well, this is, Tropical. I feel very, very sorry for the crowd that have turned up today. Five, six thousand people in, that uh, some of which will be getting very, very wet. There's a lot of umbrellas in the in the stand and, and a lot of huddling together. A lot of people have fled for some type of shelter. But this is, I didn't, I didn't have this on my radar to be honest. No, I mean there's not everywhere else in the southwest. Pretty much is fine at the moment. And from. Exeter right across the south coast. It is only this little patch. It's just a sort of sliver from Western Supermare up towards us. And it is bucketing down. And look at those covers as well, because the rain is hammering against the grey plastic on top of those sort of arched covers and bouncing away and bouncing onto the pitches alongside. I cannot remember seeing rain like this at any point this summer. Our engineer, Wayne, is doing absolutely all he can to get all of the BBC equipment in as well. He's currently wrestling with one of those furry microphones as well. Uh, Andy Zaltzman, you fresh from that lovely praise from Sam in Devon. Uh, this is unbelievable. Yes, well, the last uh, three One Day Internationals on this ground, um, two were rained off during the 2019 World Cup. There was an unfinished uh, game as well in 2021. So it's had a bit of bad luck. Uh, for its uh, international matches. There seems to be a huge number of ground staff. I'm not yeah. sure how many were expecting it. Well, here's, here's some more, and they might have just thought, you know, last game of the season, forecast there's a 10% chance of rain. We'll be all right. We'll get... And they've had a rough time of it here in Gloucestershire this year. A lot of games that have been affected by the weather. And uh, the other worry slightly is that there's a tarpaulin next to that cover there in the middle sort of covering the left-hand side of the square as we see things. And that's been blown up as well. So how much water would potentially get under there? I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't know if I should maybe say this, but I think the match could be struggling here, if I'm being completely honest. The square is absolutely drenched. There's already puddles on the practice wickets. Um, as you say, they weren't able to get the, the pitch itself fully covered for quite a bit of time and as you said one of the side covers next to has already been blown off so a lot of water has fallen unfortunately in this last five minutes or so um but yeah this not looks good <laughs> just bright sunshine and lovely weather for what, up until <laughs> literally six seven minutes ago and then an absolute deluge so not ideal it has just lightened up now certainly it is still raining but it's uh, much lighter than what it was but you can just see the whole square now is very, very wet and there's already puddles on some of the practice pitches as well. So not great signs here in Bristol, unfortunately. No, just looking at what, what we expect, according to what I can see here, maybe for the next half an hour, 40 minutes, we're going to get some rain. By some rain, it could be quite a lot of rain. <laughs> and then it goes and that's it. But 
I mean, we've got really very unlucky, I think it's fair to say, given uh, what else is happening around the, the rest of the country where it's pretty much clear. So, yeah, we, we're unfortunate. It does mean that county championship continues apace, which is good news as well. We, uh, we'll keep you up to date with that, of course. Every ball of every game on the BBC Sport website and app. Uh, the score 280 for four here after 31 overs. England asked to bat first by Ireland and Ben Duckett is unbeaten on 107. So uh, that's the tail of the tape uh, in terms of what has taken place on the field. At the moment, all that is happening out there is there are ground staff desperately fighting with these big tarpaulins to try and get as much covered as quickly as possible. Some hardy souls are actually still out there sitting on their seats underneath umbrellas that they've wisely brought with them. And uh, over at the far end of the ground, just huddling underneath the, the protection of the flat, I can see a big group of people out there by the ice cream van that looks rather sorry and sad. It is not a, it's not a Mr. Whippy sort of afternoon at the moment. No. Um, further, further to Bristol's rainy troubles with One Day Internationals, there was an abandoned game here in 2014. England v India, not a ball bowled. England v Sri Lanka in 2016 ended in a no result after rain. Uh, then they had four games in a row that were finished, uh, but then since then two more abandonments and another no result. So five of the last nine before today have not been completed, which is pretty bad luck. That's remarkably bad luck. The CEO down here, Will Brown, popped in this morning and he was, he was in good spirits. He said, looking forward to it. It's a bit of a chance for a shower or two this afternoon. <laughs> and what we've seen has been much more than that. Not in terms of, of length. It's just it's absolutely hammered it down over to the left and the west as as we look at things it's it's gray and kind of set in but it isn't that sheet of rain that we saw coming over and that has hit us and is now rolling its way to the northeast but it is pretty persistent rain at the moment and that's what's that's what's frustrating is that when you get a sharp shower like that and very sharp it was you want it to go quickly and stop quickly uh, so we'll have to wait and see when it does stop how much damage has been done and whether that's going to cause any impacts in terms of uh, a resumption. Well, there is some blue sky over to the west. The news here at Bristol is quite remarkably, this match has been abandoned. So often when we see a downpour like that, we expect to see uh, maybe a couple of hours of a clear-up operation, but the amount of rain that has fallen, not just in that burst of 20 minutes or so, but also overnight and over the last few days, has seen the outfield just too wet. I think quite a lot of water got on the square as well. And this one-day international between England and Ireland, the third and final game, the final international game of this English summer, abandoned with England on 280 for four. Ben Duckett unbeaten on 107. World Cup winner Alex Hartley. Uh, you said suddenly, you saw on the screen, match abandoned. Yes, well, I, it was one of those where the, the rain was heavy, really, really heavy. And um, a lot of water got on the actual wicket that we're playing on. It took them a while to, to get the cover on. So what they did, they dragged the big sheet on first and then they had to get the, the sort of the, the wheelie cover on, but couldn't get it on fast enough. So the sheet had been off as they're waiting for the cover to come on. So, you know, the wicket's just got too wet. Um, yeah. and, you and think it, that's it, the wicket yeah. itself? And, and there's also, there's, there's so many puddles. There's a wicket to our, our left that is uncovered. That'll just turn into mud and sludge. And then to our right, there, there's, you know, there's four or five puddles in, in quite a, a, sh a small space. So it's, it's very strange as we look out now and there's a, a, a huge rainbow, blue skies, and it is still raining, but... Um, it, I'm not surprised at all by that, to be honest with you. Uh, the rainbow is beautiful, I should say, actually. It, it ends not with a pot of gold, but actually at the Giros van over to our left. So <laughs> what do you know? But uh, Andy Zaltzman, it, go on, these remarkable run of form or lack thereof weather-wise here at Bristol. I mean, they're so unfortunate. Yeah, that's now six of the last ten matches here have not been finished in men's one-day internationals and the last four in a row. Two are complete abandonments in the 2019 World Cup. Uh, a game with Sri Lanka that ended in a no result two years ago and now uh, similar to date. Yeah, astonishing really to, uh, to see that run of, of well, lack of form really. Uh, Alex, and so that's it. End of the international summer. There it well, goes. It's, a, it's a bit of a shame. It, it ends in the way it does, to be completely honest with you, isn't it? But it um, doesn't surprise me. We've had a, a, a lot of rain throughout the summer this year. It's not been the best of summers weather-wise. Um, and it's sort of... Well, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a shame. Mm. It's a real real shame. And, uh, you know, especially because it looked like being quite a 
well, potentially record-breaking day. 280 for four after 31 overs. They just lost Sam Hayne for 17, but Ben Duckett was unbeaten on 107. That record will still stand, so he'll be... He could have got 200. Well, indeed, his first one-day international ton. So, uh, so well done him. The highlights of that are on the BBC Sport website and app, so you'll be able to follow that uh, and see some of the, the best moments of that. Um, we've had 60 days of international cricket. They've roared on through and, and countless more beyond with the domestic games as well. It's been an awful lot of fun. It has. It has been my favourite so far working with the BBC this year. You think? Oh, double ashes. You know, we've had an amazing summer. Um, the moral ashes, both men and women are, are, are with us, which rattles the Australians, which is what I love. And the grey ashes as well, as we discovered earlier. <laughs> so we're having the grey ashes as well. Yeah. I've not actually told Ebs yet, but when she's 60 and playing in the grey ashes, I've still got 10 years on her, so... <laughs> We've told her now. Uh, so, that is the news from here at Bristol, that, uh, that this game's been abandoned. There's still a few people sitting in their seats thinking, well, well why? The rain stopped. But I've, you only have to look out there, as you say. There's, there's puddles and the, uh, the wicked ends on those used pitches have sort of started resembling, you know, maybe day three at Glastonbury a little bit. And so it is understandable that we're not going to be able to see any more cricket. But what a shame, because it, it was really just a tiny little finger of horrible weather that was moving up down the down the seven and that was it i haven't seen rain like that in england for a long time though it was almost like sri lanka monsoon weather mm. it was heavy yeah it was yeah, dramatic i think it's fair to say and uh, and it was enough to see the end of this game which is which is a real shame andy zaltzman end of the summer always a sad moment for the international game there's still cricket to be played right up until the, the weekend with the county championship let's not forget yeah, it's been a lot of fun i don't know where it stands in most stats from a summer of cricket but it's felt like there's been an awful lot that first ball of the ashes and kick, kick things off for the uh, international summer deluge of numbers wonderful cricket <laughs> i know and as that email from sam said earlier and his Zaltzman deserves an awful lot of credit for, uh, for chucking all the numbers our way. So, uh, so thank you to Andy Zaltzman. Thank you to everybody that's been part of our team covering the international game over the last few weeks because uh, and months indeed. We've had a huge amount of fun doing it. We've uh, seen a lot of cricket, a lot of drama. And, uh, and thank you for joining us as well because uh, we wouldn't be able to do it without you listening and enjoying uh, uh, and your contributions, enjoying them coming into us too. So thank you so much for joining us. Frustration from here at Bristol where the rain, albeit brief, has been enough to stop any chance of uh, this game reaching a conclusion. So two out of the three games against Ireland, no results. A Ben Duckett 100 will be the, the one memory from today, if you like.